from the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. That's what we're doing. Just waiting on everybody to pop on in. What's going on, guys? Everybody pop on in. We ain't going to be on here too, too long. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, what's going on, man? How y'all living? All right, we're chopping it up. I see the whole crew is in the house. <clears throat> Wanted to go ahead and do my own space. I saw some other people, some... um. Uh, they were doing some spaces on OJ and some people had me up but they didn't put me on because they had some plebiscite babblers in the room did y'all see there was one room there was one room where they're talking about OJ and they had a brother up there plebiscite babbling like crazy like good lord and they were letting this dude plebiscite babble endlessly I'm like let me just start a space so we can just chop it up I wanted some of them suspected ones to come on in here I want to talk to some of these folks who want to stand on the whole OJ was guilty. I want them to come on up in here. I really want to talk. Wait, listen, anybody in here on some OJ was really guilty, this is your time. I want to hear your argument. I was about to give them that work in that other room. But they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't let the plebiscite babbling dude stop talking. But some of these people in here, I, I want to hear from some people who actually believe that OJ is actually guilty of murder. I've been seeing a lot of folks in the dominant society. I saw Harvey Levin from TMZ talking about, yeah, OJ's a murderer because of the civil case. He know he's a lawyer. He knows better than that. Let, let's be clear. This is my stance. I'm standing on truth business. And I'm, I got the mic open for anybody who wants to challenge it based on my research, based on following this case for over 30 years, based on living in Los Angeles, based on the evidence that was presented in the OJ case. And RIP to OJ, by the way. Rest in power. OJ Simpson is 100% innocent of murder. OJ Simpson did not, did not, did not murder anybody. Now, do we have anybody in here who can refute that? Let's hear your evidence. Because people try to play this game and they omit a lot of stuff. Hold on, it's Paul Allen. We got Paul Allen popping up. Let's see what Paul Allen has to say. <clears throat> What's up, Paul Allen? What's going on, brother? Paul? What's up, Tariq? How are you? I'm good, Mr. Paul. So how are you? I'm doing good. This might actually surprise you, but I think OJ was innocent as well. Yeah. A lot of people in the dominant white society know that OJ is actually innocent, but they had to get on the white supremacist code. That's what it was. Y'all know he's innocent. Y'all know good and well OJ didn't do all that. I think he was. I Did you ever hear the theory that it was his son that might have done it? Yeah, I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. Um, I believe that this was a damn drug hit. The um, Bay Resnick and Nicole Brown were drug addicts. They were up there snorting everybody's dope, laying up with dudes all over Brentwood and Beverly Hills, and they owed some dope money. And in the 90s, people didn't play games about their dope money. They would come get you, kidnap you, tie you up, smack you down, and, and chop you up. That was what the vibe was in the 90s. So when I don't that bullshit about the sun, I don't believe that at all. Um, they were surrounded by way too many criminals. Um, and, and plus other friends of theirs were killed in a similar manner. Let's get, um, hold on, Kendo Samson. All right. Kendo Samson. What's up, brother? 
Oh, man. Oh, what's up, man? How are you? I'm pretty good, man. I'm pretty good. Um, so I'm 25, so I'm not really like too, too familiar with this case, but I could take a situation and I can look at a situation and tell when white supremacy got his hands all over it and stuff like that. Like I've heard this case a while ago. They were saying that Nicole Brown and those people, they were involved with some real shady people. So, I mean, I can see that I can I can see how y'all can um how y'all how they going about it with that right. aspect. And um, another thing. I there was this piece of evidence that they had, and they said it was made by a documentary that was on ESPN. Well, everybody knows ESPN is ran by white supremacists anyway, so we don't. I'm, I won't take any evidence that they got at face value anyway. So that's all I had to say, man. All yeah, right, my man. Thank you so much. All right, Loop. Let's get Loop in here. Loop. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Loop. How are you? I'm okay. So you said something about the mob. I read about that too. Um, how long have you been in LA for exactly? Um, since the mid eighties, I've been out here for a minute. Okay. So you was around when that, um, everything was going on. Can you, um, elaborate more on what you mean by like the, the whole mob and Nicole Brown thing? The, the mob, wait, the mob and what now? You said the mob took out Nicole Brown. It wasn't OJ or yeah, the son. Yeah. Those were some, those were gangsters. Those were like, um, probably some Colombian gangsters or whoever. Because they were connected, um, Nicole and Ron, they were connected to the Mezzaluna restaurant. And the Mezzaluna restaurant, they were running drugs out of that, allegedly. I'll say allegedly. But it was kind of a known thing. Other people from the Mezzaluna restaurant got killed. There were other waiters who got killed. Ron and Nicole's other friend is another guy named Brent Cantor who was close to them. He got killed a few months before they did. So it was people all around them getting murdered in a similar manner because these people were tied up in the drug game. Man. They were uh, partying it up, using everybody's dope. And when you run up a tab, people come get at you. That's what that was about. The thing is, y'all excuse the dishes in the bag. It's my wife pounding away like i i did a broadcast earlier tonight on my broadcast earlier tonight i said the oj case the los angeles police they know this was like some kind of mob hit a drug hit they know that but that's not where the money was the money was okay this woman got hit in a drug debt situation but this is the ex-wife of oj so they started doing the birdman hand rub they like wait a minute Wait a minute. We could use this. What if we just sprinkle a little something here and sprinkle a little something there? And instead of it's just being a typical drug murder, which is what we get in L.A. every other week, we got a we got a celebrity connected to it. So let's milk this thing. So let's put a little something here, put a little something there. And um, we put this thing on O.J. and We go after O.J. Man, we got careers for the rest of our lives. We can be, hey, uh, the, the detective can become the chief of police off this. The prosecutor can become the mayor. We can get book deals. We can, oh, this was going to be a career changing moment if they put it on OJ, which is what they did. They put it on OJ and this was going to be their come up. I immediately, even during the trial, people were getting book deals during the damn trial. They understood the money grab Ops, um, situation with this. You had whole networks being built off of this case because of the racial component. The racial component of a rich black man who's dating a white woman, he was abusive to her, and let's say he killed her, and we've always warned white women, if you get with a black man, you burn the coal, you're gonna pay the toll. They, they say that bullshit now. So the racial component is something that the white supremacists fueled from day one on this. They were going to milk it, and they have milked it. They've milked this thing for 30 years. The OJ industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. These people made billions of dollars off the lie that OJ did it. And when the evidence clearly showed this man did not do this, it's damn near physically impossible for him to have done this. Let me get um, Lake Show. Lake Show, hop in, brother. Mr. Lake Show. Lake Show, turn your microphone on, brother. Okay, he got out of here. Okay, let's get um, Mafa, Mafa L. Mafa L, hop on. 
Rafael. Hey, hey, good evening, everybody. How y'all doing? Um, I just wanted to make a good to your point, like Mr. Nasheed, that I feel that the white supremacists wanted us to hate OJ more and believe their story, and the narrative was intercepted by us, and that's what they had a greater problem with. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I noticed a lot of the the white supremacists try to play this game. Well, OJ said he's not black, he's OJ. And in that TV show they did about the OJ trial, the recent one with Cuba Gooden Jr., which was very good, by the way, they were trying to play up the whole OJ didn't like the black community stuff. And we didn't fall for that. We're not, we, we didn't fall for that. Yeah, we know OJ got a little coon, um, little coon train in him, but that's, you know, it is what it is. OJ wasn't really shitting on the black community. He wasn't doing no Jesse Lee Peterson or Candace Owens type of thing. He didn't dump on the black community. He wasn't known for that. Yeah, he chased white women all over the damn place, but he didn't dump on the black community. So we we didn't go for that narrative. And we're still not going for that narrative. We we didn't want to see another brother have a judicial injustice. We just got tired of seeing it. So we wanted to make sure that this case was going to produce justice. And that's what it, the, the OJ case, this was the most fair trial of the century. It's the most fair trial because the streets didn't let the white supremacists rig the trial like they'd been doing. And that's really what they're mad at. I'm telling you, deep down, most of these suspected white supremacists know good and well OJ didn't kill them people. They know that. They know that. But the thing is, they like to do the I'm white and I say so. And I'm white and I say so is supposed to be the law. And when I'm white and I say so don't work, it's like, uh oh, there's a flaw in the system. See, they get off on get in a situation or get in a case where they know a person is innocent, but they are making them guilty by using I'm white and I say so. That's the sweetness of white supremacy. Yeah, we know you're innocent, but we're white and we say so. So we can we can change reality. And the black people of Los Angeles said, hell no, not this time. The wonderful black people of Los Angeles shut that bullshit down and said, no, you're going to do the right thing in this case. You're not going to be moving cases all over to the racist suburbs. You're not going to strike all of the black jurors. You're not going to pad the jury with white supremacists. You're not going to parade these white supremacist cops around and them them not get checked and cross-examined. Everybody got checked and everybody out here stood on business and they don't like that. Let's get um the deplorable patriot. Uh-oh, we got a patriot in here. Let's see how patriotic he is. What's up, Mr. Patriot? The deplorable patriot. Can you unmute your microphone? Sir? I'm sorry. I'm hey. sorry. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Hey, well, I, I just popped into your program. I've been listening to you for a few minutes. I'd just like to say, uh, yeah, I'm on the OJ train. I I, I believe the man was innocent. Uh hands down i i agree with what you're saying i i know about the drugs yeah. uh, well i've heard about them i don't know jack shit. but mm -hmm. uh I, I would like to say uh oj was an icon figure whether he, whether people like it or not and whether they think he was a murderer or not he was he captured the american people and whether whether you want to uh, say that he was guilty or innocent, so he was an icon, and it's very sad to see an icon like OJ uh, leave this earth. Right. Uh, thank, thank you so much, brother. Let's get Isaiah. Isaiah, what's up, brother? Isaiah Hicks. Uh, 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 oh, yo, um, yo, what's up, Tariq, man? What's up, bro? Yo, um, yeah, I'm from Chicago, man. Uh, I just moved here uh, from LA. I've been here about two months. This, right. this uh, I just had a quick question. Um, sorry to be y'all. Uh, I'm gonna land my plane quickly. Um, I was wondering. So, when I got here, um, you know, in Chicago, it's majority like FBA, like in certain areas, right? And uh, like we separate. It's like really segregated. 
Um, oh, like, yeah. like here, you know, as well. But I just wanted to ask a quick question. Um, why do they compare uh, Mexicans and blacks together as if like we're both uh, like as if like they like us when like they when we're out in public, like a lot of the times they try to act like. Oh. Brother, okay, let me let you call, but get your thoughts together, Isaiah. Brother, don't smoke before you call. I'm, I'm trying to rock with you, but we're not going to, you're kind of babbling and you're not, you don't have your thoughts together. Um, let's family, when you call up and you get into a discussion, let's learn how to get your thoughts together. Just don't hop on the stage just to be hopping on. All right, we don't want to do that. we got a very bad habit of folks doing that within the community. They don't really have anything to say or they haven't fleshed their thoughts out and they want to kind of work the shit out. No, 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 no. We got to be kind of on point. Have everything locked and loaded when you want to get on, man. All right. That's just a little game for you, man. Be ready. Stay ready. You ain't got to get ready. Solo, what's up, man? The Solo, unmute that mic, player. Uh, solo bounced. Okay. Let's get um, Nico. Um, Nico, let's get Nico, and then we're gonna get the good adult. All right, Nico, what's up, Nico? All right, Nico, what's up, man? Yo, uh, am I on? Yeah, what's up, Nico? What up? What up? All right. So here's the thing: the LAPD has always been the biggest gang gang in LA. Everybody knows that. Right. One, two. The Mezzaluna restaurant has been connected to like crazy amounts of drug dealing stuff, which like obviously like Nicole was connected to Ron Goldman, like work there. I think he was the wrong place, wrong time. Right. I think like, you know what I'm saying, right? Right. Yes. Um, I think that's a big factor of it. I think like OJ at the age he was not, not having like, scrapes and bruises on his body at at what almost 50 years old what was he like 48 in in 1995 or whatever yeah bullshit bullshit okay hold on let me hold on nico hold on um order order land order well, land right. well, let me let me deal with well, order land since he wants to be vocal order land hop in man No, I'm just playing. I want to hear Nico. Go off, Nico. Go off. Okay, we're talking about a guy with rheumatoid arthritis who is in his late 40s who had no marks on his body who who allegedly killed two people in a 30-minute span. Right? 25 minutes. 20, it was 25 minutes. 20, 20, 25 minutes. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, so a guy who was in shape, a 25-year-old, you know, unfortunate that he lost his life. But uh, we're talking about a, a an older guy who played in the NFL. With it. most NFL players, when they get when they retire or whatnot, like you know, their bodies are are out of it. Like, so you're telling me that OJ Simpson <laughs> fought this guy, like, and and had no no bruises or nothing. When when even when on on the the autopsy of of Goldman had like marks on his hands right right goldman had all types of defense wounds yes he did now orderland hop in man because you you hopping in and cutting folks off what's up man shit so i, I i've been debating with with my man nick about this all day and personally personally i think i think oj has a demeanor that speaks to me as as 100% obviously guilty. How so? Uh, when, well, when you when you when you see him do uh, talks on radio or on TV, um, or you know when when you see him talk about this case, why did he write a book called "What Happened If I Did Do It"? <laughs> so he can make money off white supremacists, like he like a genius, and he's a genius for doing that. A, a genius. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I think. Uh, how do you how do you he explain all his uh, how do you explain all his DNA uh, all over the scene? How do you explain explain the fibers from the white Bronco? Why did he run? Why didn't he just go to the cops and explain okay. exactly number what one, happened? All right, one, drop some did. knowledge. Drop some okay, knowledge, Tariq. I'm listening. Oh, okay, will you shut the fuck up and let me drop it? No. 
All right, calm your ass down. This ain't a mayonnaise factory. Now, which lie do you want me to debunk first? The DNA? You mean the DNA that Mark Furman planted? Come on, this is interactive. I'm not doing a monologue. I want you to chime in. The DNA that Mark Furman planted? Hop on. I'm here. I'm here. We okay. we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, if yeah, we don't. That we, know. That's, we do know. That's, we do that, know. That's, no, we don't. We no. There's no evidence of that. That's pure cross examination, defense attorney tactics. No. If they ask somebody, "Did you plan evidence?" and you say, "I plead the fifth, that means you did it. He pled the fifth on all sorts of shit. Uh huh. That's that was. Did you watch the video? Question. He was pleading fifth left that's and what, right. That means no. That's a yes or no question. If somebody okay. asks you for it, if you planted evidence and you don't say no, you did it. And That's because he was being advised by his attorney because uh, he got absolutely blown be, up because, for that racist shit. Uh, right. Because they, they knew that he was going to get perjured if he lied and said, no, he didn't plant it. And they proved his ass planted it. They proved Yeah, it. but if you watch that whole video, he pled the fifth on almost everything. Because his ass planted the damn evidence. And then they You found, don't know that. That's just defense uh, attorney yeah, talk. I do know it That's, because they, they found video of him talking to that screenwriter admitting that he plants evidence on black people. Yeah. Okay. So, where's the evidence that he planted evidence in this case? That's that's um, that's, complete, that's complete conjecture, which is fine the in the case of a criminal case. If you want the evidence to say that is OJ was found innocent. The evidence was OJ was found innocent because they showed video of how the evidence. Oh, my friend, you have. There's a difference between not guilty and innocent. You must. No, he, no, he was innocent. He's innocent. Okay, but well, what are we talking about? The trial? Or are we talking about facts? I'm talking about facts. I'm talking about the facts. That evidence was planted. They took his blood and then took the blood and went and planted it. Where? Where is the evidence that that was planted? Where? They, that's conjecture. But, but You're conjecturing. Kind of, they took OJ's blood and then drove around with his blood all over the damn cities. Where that, did they get his blood? They got it from him. He volunteered Where? his blood. He volunteered his blood. He went in and volunteered. Hey, take my blood. I'm not, I'm not guilty. And then they took his blood and went and planted the shit all over the place. Has anybody come, come out since the trial admitting that they planted his blood on the scene after getting it from OJ. Where's that coming from? What, where's your proof it came on that? From the trial, they were showing how, not only did they show it in the trial, they showed the blood evidence that they collected from OJ had a chemical called EDTA in it, meaning that it had to come from a vial that we, where it was stored. So they kept proving over and over that that shit was planted. Also, Nicole Brown Simpson had somebody else's DNA under her damn fingernails that wasn't OJ's. Do some research, dude. We didn't research this thing left and right. I mean, I'm a little drunk right now. And I'm uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. I bet you are. Get your drunk ass out. All of here. right. All right. Peace out, bro. All right. Yeah. I ain't playing games with y'all. I'm not going to come up here with that bullshit. We know this case, dude. Do y'all know that? Some of y'all don't even know that stuff. They found y'all Google everything I'm saying. Nicole Brown had somebody else's damn DNA under her fingernails, and they never said that in the media. They don't tell you about the white people who were walking around around 10, 30, 10, um, 10, 35, and they said they didn't see anything. So that kills that whole timeline. Then there was another white woman who saw four people leaving Nicole's spot. And they didn't let her get on the, get on the stand. They discredited her because her testimony was going to show that the police were planning evidence. Because if you came out with a different story other than OJ did it, and you showed, hey, there's some other people that was really involved, that would have proved that the police were planning the evidence. And they were trying to frame OJ. Family, this is why independent media is very important. Because the white media, they... They're making billions with this lie. They've been promoting this goddamn lie for years and scared niggas. Not y'all in here, because you guys know better. But the Mark Lamont Hills and all of these people who got to go up to white mommy and white daddy for a job, they sit here and go along with the program. Ooh, OJ, he, ooh, they know he was getting in the whole heap of trouble. He so did do it. Don't y'all be celebrating no OJ now. He's not no martyr. He ain't no martyr for, for nothing. Man, shut up, niggas. Scary ass. I don't work for white people, nigga. I'm, I'm speaking truth to power. OJ didn't do all that. Let's, let's be real, black folks. Stop believing everything white people tell your ass. They're trying to tell you OJ sat up here on his way to a flight and said, hey, before I get on this plane, let me go put on a damn monkey ass outfit and go run over here and kill my wife real quick, my ex-wife real quick. 
and they're telling you he did all that shit in a 25 minute time frame. He went on, he put on a janky outfit, a sweatsuit, some Bruno Mogli shoes. Think about that. A skull cap and some gloves that didn't fit and then drove over there and killed her and killed Ron went and got rid of all of the blood, all of the evidence, all the weapons, everything, cleaned up, and then made his flight. And we supposed to believe that shit? Just use common sense, family. Think when you got to go on a flight, think about it, family. When y'all got to go out of town somewhere, you go on a flight, you ain't got time to fix you something to eat real quick. You ain't got time to put a damn burrito in the microwave, let alone go kill some fucking body. <laughs> the fuck you talking about? Nobody got time to do all that shit. You got to catch a flight. You scrambling around packing and making sure you got everything you need. And, you know. Hey, hold on. Before I go catch this flight, let me go kill this motherfucker real quick. Stop it. Just use common sense. Let's get a lieutenant somebody. What's your what's up, man? Lieutenant somebody. What's your name, man? Is that me, me or oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you man, you lieutenant. Some I can't pronounce your last name. I don't know. What no, no, is. this is the good adult. Uh, that the lieutenant is somebody else. I'll wait. Oh, it's somebody else. Okay, somebody else. Good adult. What's up, man? Uh, good evening. I appreciate you. Let me speak real quick. I like to view the OJ circumstance from a different perspective uh, than than you've offered the audience. Though your perspective is quite humorous, I will say. Um, I like to um, look at it from the lens of giving more credit to who um, Johnny Cochran is and less about. OJ's innocence. I think that the story unfolds and really shed um, shed lights on how wonderful, how genius. What 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 is that? What is that? Why are we doing that? Why are we? Hold do- on, wait 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 wait. wait, wait. Okay, hold on. This, okay, sorry. The white supremacist being dumb. But go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Yeah. I, anyway, my my whole point was to suggest that uh, I believe that the trial really highlights more about who Johnny Cochran is and less about OJ's innocence. Uh, the other thing I offer, the other thing. Now, now, what do you mean by that? Because um, that can be interpreted certain ways, sir. Um, you said it's less about O.J.'s innocence. It has to go hand in hand. O.J. arguing that case superbly and masterfully um, goes hand in hand with O.J.'s innocence. Would you agree or disagree? Disagree strongly. Okay, how so? So do you think O.J. is guilty? Let me ask you that. I do, Yes. Okay, how so? Let's let's get into that. How do you think he's guilty? I, I think it lacks you outside of your claim of racism. Uh, you have no other motive for the murder of Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown. You would need to present to me a motive for their deaths outside of simply racism, and they wanted to get OJ like he was Hurricane Carter or something. <laughs> Who said that they were killed because of racism? I never said that. Why? So why? So why did they frame uh, OJ? Hold on, no, 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 no. Yeah, you, your, your narratives is all over here. Yeah. I didn't say that Ron and Nicole were killed because of racism. They wanted to get OJ because OJ was a, a big target and they could come up off that and they could milk it, which is what they've done. If they would have said that it was a, a regular drug debt murder, which was very common in the 90s, that story would have lasted a weekend. That was a drug murder. So let me understand. That was a- let me see. Make sure I got your, mo- your 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 chain of. I mean, not your chain of events. Your understanding that Ron and yeah. Nicole were murdered over a drug deal, and then they yeah, hold, drug debt, drug debt, drug debt, uh-huh, 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 a drug debt, and then they. You can tell the audience who they are. Then they decided to pin that drug debt or that murder. Excuse me. Police. Hold on. The police. The police decided right. to pin that on OJ because why? Why they choose OJ to pin on him? Why OJ? Because they knew that Ron, well, well Nicole was OJ's um, ex-wife, and they were like, being a celebrity is connected with this, let's milk it. And they milked it, sir. The, they, the LAPD the pinned, a, pinned a, the LAPD, yes. hold on, hold on, hold, make, yes. hold on, hold on with the yeses. You're telling me the LAPD pinned a murder uh-huh. on OJ so they could get yeah. for TV ratings? So they can come up off of it. Which is what they did. They were making that was a come up, and also the lead detective was a known white supremacist. Right. So I said that. So outside of racism, right? I know that's a large component for why they pinned it on him. From your perspective, they pinned it on OJ because they hate him because he's a black man, and because they wanted to profit off of the TV ratings. I don't know where this hated because of a black man. What is racism? Well, what is racism, Tariq? Um, racism is a power dynamic. Racism is not hatred of black people. No. 
Oh, uh, racism, a power dynamic, dude. Uh, some a uh, uh, white supremacist can lay up in bed with your ass and still practice white supremacy. White supremacy ain't about just I hate black people. I didn't say it was just. About, I said that is that is right. I, did, I never said just. I never said singular. Where, where where are you from? I hear an accent. Where are you from? Where's your family from? Where's my um, America? No no no. I hear an accent, sir. Where's your family from? You mean what region of America? From the South. Sir. From the South, Tariq. The South. You have a slight accent, sir. Okay. Where is your family from? Because you don't have a Southern accent. That's not a Southern accent. Where's your family from? I, I, I don't know how many times I can say it. My family is from the South. They're Black Americans from the South. Savannah, Georgia, to be exact. Can we go back to OJ now? Yeah, you don't have a southern accent, sir. I'm not from the south. My family is, Tariq. Why, why would I have the southern accent if my gr- right. my my grandmother's from there, not me? <laughs> that doesn't make sense, bro. You grew up in New York somewhere? I did. I Yes, correct. Right. What part? Brooklyn? No. Okay. All right. So- I, I can hear you. I can hear your accent. I'm just saying it doesn't. It sounds like you have a you come you, some uh, some of your lineage is. Sounds like you don't want to talk about OJ anymore because. Uh, no, I'm talking about OJ. I'm going back to OJ. I'm just but some of the stuff you're saying. It's giving me hmm. um, Caribbean vibes. Well, shout out to Caribbean people. I, I do love me some damn oxtails. Anyway, so uh, uh, right. So you have Caribbean ancestry. No, no, sir. I don't. No, I don't. I just really do enjoy. You're- Okay. I enjoy. I'm assuming. I think you have Caribbean ancestry, but go ahead though. I just wanted to establish that. But let, well, let's get back into OJ because I'm, I'm down to talk about OJ. Cool. So, um, I just want the reason so, I feel that he's innocent. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. The reason I feel that like he's guilty. Pardon me. Uh, he's acquitted because of the genius of Johnny Cochran, and that's that's to be applauded. Okay. So if you think he's okay, so let's go back to OJ. Let's get into it. Why would OJ kill that woman or want to kill her randomly on that day? The, the 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 narrative that the white media said, well, he beat her a couple of years ago and then for no reason whatsoever decided on April 11th, 1994, for no reason whatsoever to wake up and say, hey, let me go kill her tonight. Why would he do that? What what was his motive? Very good question. And let's just substantiate for the audience. That was not alleged. If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong. It was affirmed that they did have domestic violence issues in their past relationships, correct? years ago yeah. right. all right cool so let's make sure that the audience knows that uh and then as it, yeah and then as it pertains to why he might murder this woman uh, the data would show that the majority of those who die um wives who are murdered are done so by their spouses so why spouses and they do it and they do it when they're in the relationship they don't wait two years and when they break up and then go back and that's like there's no data so data don't show that. there's no doubt da- that don't happen there's there is there's no data that shows that uh, that don't even make sense hold on uh, most most of those <clears throat> crimes are pet crimes passion heat of the moment type of shit you don't sit up and you done broke up with somebody and divorced them and then years later let me go kill this bitch let me go finish the job you, you're right does, 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 does that make sense it does because you're suggesting that the, no, it doesn't. i'm gonna tell you no, it doesn't no, it doesn't because you told me it doesn't or it doesn't because i so you're telling me so you're saying that oj just got up that day and remembered he beat his wife a couple of years earlier and what decided to kill her that day that's what you're saying no, that's what you're telling the audience i'm saying you won't okay you won't okay, let so me what are you, you won't let me say what, what I'm was saying. the motive okay because you're talking about some data well i'm asking you from a practical standpoint mm-hmm. what made oj that day he hadn't been with his wife in years, but what made him that day say, hey, I'm a killer? Right. So let me do my best to answer the question as concisely as possible. That I, I I am not sure of the exact status of their relationship, though they were divorced. But we also know here in this room that plenty of people who are divorced are still in communications uh, in many different shapes, forms, and fashions. And so to suggest, uh-huh. hold on, friend. So to suggest that because they were divorced meant that they had no communication, it would be false. They still had a relationship. That relationship. Yes, they did. Okay. That relationship still could have been very tumultuous and toxic and still could have led him to a position of passion to take her life not really because earlier that day they were he went to a recital and he was perfectly fine he was perfectly fine he saw her he saw the kids he was cool so what made him that night say hey let me go throw on some bruno moglies and a sweatsuit and a skull cap so she won't recognize me with this skull cap 
and go kill her with a knife. Gotcha. So I can't speak to what made him that night do it, but just no more. No. And, and that's the problem. But it, and that's you're the still no more. You're still stuck with no more. I hear you. You're still stuck with the problem of your motive not holding water because you're suggesting that it was only done for racism and for rape. No, no, and, no, no. Stop that. You stop, gave no, two reasons. You gave two reasons. I didn't say he killed her because this is tethered. Talk. No, no. The pinning. No, no, no. Not the killing. The pinning. I'm asking you why the LAPD would pin this murder on him. They had to pick. They why they choose OJ. You're telling your audience it was because of racism and because of some sort of financial gain. Which what? Dude, I li listen to me. I live in Los Angeles, dude. In the '90s, the Los Angeles PD were extremely corrupt. Okay, there was something called the Rampart scandal. Mm -hmm. That was common for them to frame black folks and plant evidence on black folks and murder black folks. That was common. They had a whole overhaul of their system because it was so damn common and corrupt at that time. I Mark Furman, who was a known, open, blatant white supremacist, was a lead detective. He was a higher up. This was somebody who was a, a high ranking officer. Absolutely. So you can imagine the lower ranking officers, and this guy was genocidal. Right. I'm not disputing any. I'm not. Corrupt. I'm not. Tariq. I'm not disputing any of that. That is confirmed information. 110. percent I agree with that. What I'm disputing. So why do you? Why do you keep questioning? Here's why. Whether but, they're racist or I'm not. No, no. When Mark, no, sir. I'm not questioning whether they're racist or not. I'm questioning why those racists would choose to target OJ, right? Who was a celebrity, celebrated, uh, and seen as a hero nationally. White men loved OJ. The same. If hold on. Let me. Let me. Let me land, let me land, Tariq. You just said a moment ago, you're you don't stop, brother. Hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on. You just said a moment ago about this ideal that some people can uh lay next to you but still be racist, correct? You said it yourself. I'm suggesting to you think you think those LAPD officers liked OJ Simpson? The world loved OJ Simpson, America loved you OJ. Think There's those you have white no evidence, you have no evidence to suggest it was a purposeful reason for the LAPD to target OJ as putting the crime. The crime hell I don't. None. Mark you're Ferdinand trying to turn OJ words. into Mark a Ruben Carl. Mark, I'm, I'm going to block you because you, you're getting emotional. And this is a tether, by the way, guys. Mark Furman's own words. They got Mark Furman on tape talking about black people like he's insane. Every other word is nigga, nigga. I do this to niggas. I kill niggas. I beat niggas. Every other word is nigga. Mark Furman went out to OJ's house before when he was married to Nicole. Listen to what I'm saying. Let's stop babbling for a minute. Family, raise your hand if y'all knew this. A few years earlier, there was a domestic violence call. The cop who came was Mark Furman. And Nicole was like, nah, I'm fine. So now you got this black man who's banging this white woman and being abusive. And you got this white cop here. You think that white cop didn't want to get revenge? This white racist cop who's anti-black? goes to a, a house and a black man is a, accused of beating on a white woman, you think this cop didn't want some kind of revenge? You're trying to make excuses for the, the racism of these guys? No, sir, I'm Go not. Ahead, so I'm not making any excuses. I've already acknowledged that what you said was true as it pertains to the level of racism throughout the LAPD and other police precincts throughout California. I'm already substantiating that 110% and agree with you. Let me be clear about that. What I'm offering you is to suggest that that is not enough of a motive for you to convince me that that's the reason for which it is that they happen to pin this murder on OJ when in that's 100% why they did it. Racism. Yeah, that's not good enough. If that's all you've got to hang your hat on, that yeah. ain't enough. And, and, yeah, yeah. And and money and gain, and which is what these folks tried to do. These folks were getting book deals all over the damn place. The OJ industry, the OJ did it industry, do you know that this thing has made a billion dollars? It's a billion dollar industry. Let me ask a question. They've made books, television shows, mm -hmm. movies. Off a of false narrative was not. If they told the truth, if they told the truth that that was a drug murder, the story would have went away in a weekend. Right. Um, you see, was not, from my understanding, Nicole Brown um, a household name. Nicole Brown Simpson. No, she wasn't. She was not. Because I, I beg no. to differ. When was the when the what? <laughs> when was Nicole Brown Simpson's name a household name? Nobody knew her. I beg to differ. But oh, you mean you beg to differ? Who knew her? I, I remember her names being obviously through the divorce and association with OJ, her name being um, quite well known. 
You're just making stuff up. No, Her not. name was never well known. No, you didn't know who OJ was who OJ Simpson was married to? Nobody knew that. Nobody knew his wife. Nobody knew her. She was never, ever, 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 ever a household name. I, never, ever. I disagree. Never, ever, ever. You, you disagree. You're just saying I'm a tether and I say so. Nobody <laughs> knew who she was. She was a nobody. Nobody. Your ad hominems don't make your argument any stronger. Nobody knew her into the murder. Ad hominems don't make your strong your argument any stronger. But but you're just saying I'm. Uh, I disagree. Uh, that that don't make it right. Nobody knew her, brother. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, we can about. just have, we can disagree about that. Point. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you, brother. Because you just you just kind of babbling now. Thank uh, you so much. Never babble. Never right. Okay. Yeah. When they when they just start, and he's a tether, by the way, family. Listen. We can hear your accent. That's why I asked. And just his logic is real tetherish. My brother Afro Elite, hop on. How you doing, Tariq? Can you hear me? I can hear you, brother. What's going on? Okay, I'm gonna say what that what that other tether did. And Stephen A made a comment earlier today about the situation with Johnny Cochran and OJ. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to be all like, we should give all of the credit to Johnny Cochran because he found like this loophole in the system and was able to get OJ free, even though he was guilty. So they're trying to give him this this big credit like he found a loophole. No, he didn't. He just fought. He he stuck to the facts of the situation and it was a racial railroading and he was able to prove that he was able to prove his innocence. The thing is, is that the media is trying to make uh, Nicole Brown seem like she's some type of angel sent from heaven. Nicole Brown was heavy into drugs. Nicole Brown was heavy into prostitution. Uh, her friend and OJ's friend, Cato, he was re- he the judge refused to let him testify about her drug use because they're trying to make it seem like she was some angel and nobody right. wanted to do anything to her. And everyone knew she was um, heavy into drugs. So was uh, Goldman. So and yeah. there was a lot of motive for other people uh, on top of the fact that the what's his name? Furman. Furman was almost there immediately after the alleged incident, as if right. he was almost in on it because he right. was right there at the time before anybody showed up. Furman was already there. So that's very mm-hmm. odd. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much. Yeah. Furman pops up on the scene and he's supposed to be this super detective. Like, oh, look at me. Look what I found. He's looking in all these weird places. Oh, look what I just found. Oh, look, I just looked under the car and look what I found. Yeah, he's a, he started planting stuff real, real early. He started planting stuff early. And the thing is, he didn't know that OJ had a real strong alibi. That's why they had to diddle around with the timeline and he only they could only give OJ a 25-minute um, window to do all of this weird stuff and that makes no sense. All right? Let's get Miss Buffalo in. Wait, Buffalo, I was going to get you in. Buffalo, um... One being good. Let's get you in here. Yay. Hi, Tariq. I won't be long. Um, This is a very interesting topic. I hope everybody's doing good. I hope you're doing great. Yes, I wanted to I wanted to bring up just three things. I was looking it up. Mark Furman said nigger in a derogatory manner 41 times on that um, on that recording. Was you saying something? Right, right. I agree. Yeah, he just repeatedly said it. But go ahead. He did. And I believe he was saying that he would pull over black men that was uh, in a car, in a vehicle with a white woman. He would destroy their IDs. Um, Lots of different things that he was saying on that recording. And then, you know, when you talk about the cover up, um, Ito, I think that was the, the judge's name. He he kind of restricted a lot of the testimony and didn't only let them play certain parts of that. So that was very problematic. And just to kind of point out what you were talking about for this person who was acting like they don't understand how racism, uh, white supremacy played into the um, trial. And so the second thing is I had listened to a podcast by it's, it's called the cows, the context of white supremacy, and they do a book club uh, right around, I guess, one of the anniversaries of of um, uh, maybe when it was uh, when Johnny Cocker had passed away. But they read the book. Let me pull it up here. I got it. I apologize. They have read the prosecutor, the black prosecutor, 
right? His name is Christopher Darden. Yeah. They read his book and went all through the evidence. And then they also had one of the Dream Team members, the F. Lee Bailey gentleman. Yeah. And he mm-hmm. did the um, intricacies of where the murder happened and for O.J. to get back to his house. And so if anybody that dug into this trial and the evidence, they would know that O.J. had absolutely not i think it was 15 minutes from the her time of death to where um he was leaving to go to what florida or something he was he was he had a driver yeah um and so there was absolutely no amount of time that he could get that done and so the f lee bailey and his team were the ones that really brought that information out and lastly what i want to talk about is you know uh it's interesting that most people that don't know black American culture, they watch TV shows and movies and shit. And then they think that that's real. And so the, do you remember or know who Jeffrey Tubin is? He's the guy who did the miniseries. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And so he did the miniseries for, um, the OJ trial that everyone based on his book. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Based on his book. And that's the dude who got caught masturbating, by the way. Yes, sir. That's yeah. what I just wanted to bring that to the forefront again as oh, a reminder. Yeah. That's all I wanted to say. So I hope everybody's having a great day. Thank you, dear. Again. Let's get White Lives Matter in here. White Lives Matter. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Let me get White Lives Matter in here. Oh, well, yeah. Hold on, White Lives Matter, I'm trying to get you in here. Okay, there you go, White Lives Matter. Uh Uh-oh, what's going on with White Lives Matter? Oh, there we go. We know, I gotta hear what White Lives Matter has to say. And waiting on White Lives Matter to get their phone to work. They need to be iPhones matter so they can get a better phone. Let's see. So White Lives Matter, California. So I guess they got different chapters of White Lives Matter. All right. Uh, White Lives Matter, you ready? I'm waiting on you to get your microphone together. While we're waiting on White Lives Matter, let's get FBA goddess. Hi, Tariq. I hear you're a baby girl in the background. Yes. Yeah, she needs to be asleep. She's running around here. <laughs> but look, they are trying to retry him. Um, this is crazy to me. I mean, he already went to court. I don't. Why are they trying to retry him? TMZ today was talking about that when he did the, they did the, um, the trial for um, the civil trial that yeah. um, he was found guilty of murder. No, that's isn't that what. Right. No, that's isn't what that, that guy was saying today. Right. Harvey Levin was saying that he's a lawyer. He knows better than that. A civil trial doesn't mean you're, you're guilty. It just means you're financially liable. And he knows that. If somebody goes to your, your, your property and they fall down, you can be financially liable for them falling down. That doesn't mean you made them fall down. Now, he knows that. So they try to play these little word games. And um, and shout out to OJ because OJ didn't have to pay a damn thing on that damn civil trial. OJ finessed their asses out of that, too. He finessed them out of that. He had that NFL pension, and they couldn't touch that pension. So they didn't get no money out of OJ. OJ kept that thing real gangster and player the whole time. So um, let me see. I wanted White Lives Matter to get up here. I wanted to I wanted to hear about these white lives. White Lives Matter, get back up here. I wanted to hear about some of these white lives that matter. Let's talk about it. White Lives Matter, get back up here. Let's chop it up. And let's 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 see what's on your spirit. All right, let's get um. Let me see. Let me see who else we got. Who else we got? Um, a lot of folks in here. Um, well, we got a lot of people in here tonight. What's up, Red Joker? I see you. All right, hold on, hold on. Just trying to see. Y'all raise your hand if y'all ready. Y'all raise your hand. Let's get. Brandon, you ready again? Because you tried to get on early, and I let you on, and you didn't say nothing. Brandon, what's up, brother? Hi. Yeah, yeah, hello. How how are you? Talk I'm good, brother. What's on your mind? I just want to say, um, in regards to O.J. Simpson, that nigga guilty. That nigga did it, Tariq, and you know he did, nigga. Don't come up here taping for that man. You know that nigga did it. You know he did it. You hear me, Tariq? You know that nigga did it. 
He's a first round draft pick in hell right now. He's a okay. first round draft pick in hell. Okay, you don't even believe that. It's it, it, trolling for attention. Okay, so let me get some real people up here. Okay, let's get our defaulter. Let's get defaulter in here. Defaulter. Defaulter, turn your microphone on. What's going on, Defaulter? I. Hello. Are you all right, brother? Hello. Dude, I don't even know where to begin. Your your language barrier or the janky phone. I don't even know where to begin with you, brother. All right, Defaulter, where where are you at, man? Because you're clearly not in this country. All right. All right, let me get Pakistan. Pakistan. You're in Pakistan? Yes, Pakistani. Okay. Okay. So make me some curry goat or something. I mean, do something. I don't know what you're trying to do, brother. I mean, you do have to. Mm -hmm. Brother, what the are you making the Dorian back there? What do you what are you making back there, brother? Okay, okay. Are you washing off your cow? What are you doing back there? You can you wash your cow later. I mean, don't call me while you're in the middle of washing your cow. Uh, let me let you. I'll let you finish washing your cow, brother. Damn. Okay, I'm trying to give you an opportunity. I'm trying to work with you, but shit. Let's get on um, Big Dave in here. Okay. Don't be trying to call up bathing your cow, brother. Big Dave, what's up, man? What's up, brother? So what's what's up, Dave? Where are you? Samoan or Hawaiian? What are you? Samoan, homie. Shout out to Samoa, man. I went out to um Samoa and we had a great time out there, man. That's right. Are you from American Samoa or West Samoa? Man, I'm from both. My mom and dad is from both. I got my mama from from Western Samoa, my dad from American Samoa. When I go out there, I like eating them taro roots. Them taro roots are delicious out there. Yeah, um, we grew up on taro roots. That's why all these Samoans are few mothers. Yeah, man, them the shits make you strong. That's why y'all run around there five years old with big ass yeah. muscles. And shit. <laughs> That's yeah. right, brother. Man, so what's on your mind, brother? Nah, I just saw the thread. I just, I just want to hear what you want to say about it. I, I didn't really hear anybody's, anybody's opinion. If it, if it was my opinion, you know what I mean. Just sad day. For OJ, you know what I mean? Yeah. At the end of the day, a lot of people didn't like the brother, you know what I'm saying, because of what happened. But for me, it's all about uh, did you see it with your own eyes? So, you yeah. know, you can't really judge anybody until you see it with your own eyes. You you definitely have the right to have your opinion, you know. It, go, it goes with the territory. But at the end of the day, you know, we're not here to judge anybody. Man, just, you know, sad he got kids, you know what I'm saying? He's a family man. and. Whatever, whatever he did, God going to, you know, it's his day. So, you know, just want to want to just say that. You know what I mean? I know a lot of people don't really agree with what he did or whatever happened and stuff. But at the end of the day, for me, to all y'all, till, until you see it with your own eyes and you know you, he did it for sure, then, you know what I mean, then it is what it is. But everyone has the right to have their opinion, and, you know, that's that. Like there I, it is. There it is. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, yeah, but yeah, OJ's innocent. He was proven innocent by the court, by the evidence, and <clears throat> nobody is. Look, truth be told, nobody can logically say that OJ is guilty. I want y'all to be very clear about that. That's why the phone lines are open. If anybody can, li like the, the tether who called, he couldn't even say anything logical. He started talking about, well, you know, the people, you know, the, the domestic violence and, you know, statistically the people who is you know you with your partner and you kill him and no you don't divorce somebody and then go back and kill him no statistically no you don't do that you don't divorce somebody and then go kill him a couple of years later no you don't do that nobody can logically roll out a scenario of why OJ killed these people or how he could have done it when you look at the logic, it's damn near impossible. 
Jose, what's up, man? Jose. We're waiting on Jose. Waiting on Jose to come on through. Jose, hop on, man. All right. While we're waiting on Jose to come on through, let's see. Everybody raise your hand because we do have a lot of people in here. Let's get Joshua McMahon in here. Joshua McMahon. All right. I want to hear from some of these people in the dominant society who gets in their little circles and start talking about how guilty he is. I want them to come on here and then present your damn case. I want you to tell us how that man is guilty of doing a damn double murder in a 25 minute time frame with no damn motive. OJ had zero motive family. The whole, he beat his wife two years earlier. That's not a motive. If that was the case, he would have just, after then, you don't wait two years after you divorced and y'all done broke up and then you decide one day, let me go get her. That don't make sense. Joshua, what's up, bro? Tariq, I got two questions for you. Go ahead. And it better not be trollish, but go ahead. No trolling. All right. Question one. Why did black female jurors on video admit they knew he was guilty? That's a lie. Say the verdict was revenge That's for a Rodney lie. King. That's a lie. Y'all been telling that lie all day. There was a Everybody black... can see it on Twitter right now. That, You're lying through your teeth. Lie. We that all watched the video. Say, that woman Check. did. Okay, you're going to shut that little man A's mouth. The woman in the video didn't say, we knew they were guilty. We knew he was guilty. She never yes, she did. No, she didn't. Play it. Play it. You got a copy of it. Play it. She didn't say they knew he was guilty. Nobody said that. Nobody. Yes, she, did. she used no, the word she revenge. Didn't. She didn't say we knew he was guilty. You white supremacists are lying, which is proof of innocence. Tariq, you're a black supremacist endorsing. And you're and you're a lying little mayonnaise militia man. You're Let not going to get a lie. sentence out. You keep no, it, no. You keep... You're, you're not. You're not going to lie now. You're... Do you think no, 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 Tariq, no. stop no. being scared of another man talking. No, no, no. You're not going to lie, and you're not going to talk over me. Now, present some Are you facts. deciding who lies, Tariq? Are you God um, now? Now, God? now, present your case. How did Let OJ the people kill decide. Tariq? You, okay, go Let ahead. How did OJ? Now, you just told a lie, and I'm not going to let, let you the lie. people decide. You just lied and said people said something that they did not say. I'm not going to let. You suspected white supremacists lie. You're complete. Okay, now, let's bring some truth. Then you got... One more lie to tell. You tell another lie, your little old pale ass is out of here. Now bring some truth to power. Go Tariq, ahead. Tariq, don't be a fruity pie. Let the man talk, all right? I'm uh, sir. This so is not what? your dad you're talking to. Your Number dad is one. But go ahead. The people can go look and she used the word revenge. Let the people decide. They don't got to trust you. They don't got to trust but me. But you said they you knew their that O.J. was guilty. That's what you said. You lied. Who is she talking about revenge against? But you lied. Who is she you're... talking about revenge So you admitted that you lied. No, I'm not admitting no, I lied. You're lying. No, no, no. The white... No, no, no. You lied again. No, no. You lied again. The white man interviewing her used the word revenge. He was trying to lead her with the questioning. He used the term revenge. He's like, is this, is this, revenge? Is this revenge? Is this revenge? He's like, I don't know. Questions. Is it correct? Your name he is was, He was, he was, yes, okay, don't, don't, okay, little mayonnaise man. You're not going to talk over me. You're not going to lie and then try to babble. The white man interviewing that sister was trying to lead with the question. So do you think some people thought it was revenge? And the, the lady was like, I, I guess. I don't know. It could be. That don't mean shit. What does, how does that take away from OJ's innocence? You, OJ's innocence. If you so don't what? Me, I can't talk. So you have okay. to be fair. Just be how fair. does that Let take away from OJ's innocence? Sure, let me respond. You have a knack for muting people. Be fair. The reason it takes away from his innocence is this. First off, we all agree a woman was murdered and her head was nearly decapitated. We, uh -huh. all, agree, we all agree it happened. So the question becomes, who is the perpetrator? Right. I submit to the people listening that the man in the Bronco threatening to kill himself with DNA in the Bronco and furthermore, when the jury says 
90% of us thought he was guilty. And when the jury acknowledges that it was done out of revenge for Rodney King, I submit that he's guilty and a civil jury found it. Um, okay, let's slow down. Okay. The white reporter was using the word revenge. He was throwing that out there. That's white supremacist terms. The people there wanted a fair trial. They were talking about not letting them rig the trial like they did with Rodney King, Latasha Harling. That's what they're talking about. They're not talking about letting the guilty man free. They're talking about not letting the corrupt system corrupt this trial. That's what they're talking about. They're not trying to be like you white supremacists. They were doing the right thing, and that was a very fair trial. Now, going back to OJ in the Bronco, mm -hmm. talking about he had a gun to his head. If he had a gun to his head, why didn't he confess? If he's going to end it all, why, why didn't he say, okay, I did it? He never said that. And he wasn't running from anybody. He wasn't running from anybody. Why were they in the Bronco with 500 police cars behind him? He was on his way home. He was driving north. He's on his way home. Okay. Um, and, 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 and when the black female juror said the, the word revenge, the white who was she talking said about? Revenge. The white report, that's the word he said. So he when she said 90%, who was she talking about? The reporter threw that out. No, there. she no. said 90%. Who gives a shit what she says? She's just talking. Now, now the, reporter, the actual this reporter, this reporter was leading with the questions. And You're the, ignoring what the juror said. You know better than the juror. What? It's literally the black female. What, it's one woman, and she was being led with the questions. She doesn't. She couldn't speak for all the other jurors. So what are you talking about? She couldn't speak for all the other jurors. She was in the jury. And she didn't speak for all the other jurors. That doesn't take away from OJ's innocence. OJ is innocent, bro. Tariq, did you play ball growing up? You uh, like sir. one of them little guards always fouling people with that mute button. You just like. Yeah, yeah, because you're not going to lie. Huh? You're not going to lie. And, and deep down, you, look, deep down. Look, so know, let me go to my look, second question. Look, wait, well, hold on. Deep down, you know that some of your white brethren killed old um, Nicole and Ron. You know some of your white brethren did it. You know that. Deep down, you know it. You know good and well OJ didn't do that deep down. But you want to do the I'm white and I say so. Do you really think that, Tariq? Are you trying I to get some that. attention right now, man? I ain't, I'm not trying to. Hey, so let's go to the second jury, point because you, you're, uh, you're trying to troll right now. I'm not trolling it's the your damn, spaces, OJ, but you're, OJ you're got to troll. OJ got innocent for a reason. So. All right, so the people can decide. They can trust their own eyes. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, according all, of you, all of you can go see what the actual woman has to say on video. Uh -huh. You don't have to listen to Tariq. You don't have right, to listen you, to You've already lied on the woman about yep, I'm not lying. We don't have to lie. You're lying. You say I'm lying. Let them, you know who's let, lying. Who's let lying? The judge. Who? Okay. We we're judging by the lead detective, who was a bleeding white supremacist, who was known for planting evidence on black people, who was a uh, an anti-black racist. We believe sure, you have you have tons of racist, corrupt black cops too. What's up? Uh, no, we don't. No, we don't. Rampart. Yeah. Rampart. We're, that was run by the white supremacists. What are you talking about? What are you, delusional? Everybody Google it. Rampart, corruption, cops. It's black, it's white, and again, you're lying. They can trust their own eyes. But you want me to go to my second point, or you want to stuck, get stuck on here? Here's Dude, the those point. cops, those rampart cops were white supremacists targeting black folks. So I don't know what you're talking about. They were black cops that got locked up and charged. Dude, those were mostly white cops. No, it was both. Cops. This is the problem. You have hate were, in your heart. Were I don't have hate. I don't have hate. Those were, those were, they were getting charged for racism. Did your mother raise you to hate white people? Is that, is they that were what getting this is about? They were getting charged for their racism. Did your corruption. mother raise you to hate white people? Okay. Why do you okay, have hate sir, in your heart? Sir, so stop projecting. I'm stop not projecting. projecting. You're, you're projecting because you know that OJ is innocent. And you know that. <laughs> My man. Here's the next you know, point. You know Goodwill. OJ said he right. didn't kill those I, two people. You but should go, go read Daniel Petroselli's opening statement in the civil trial. I urge everyone in here. To go read Daniel Petra. The simple trial doesn't mean the plaintiff's guilt. attorney for the woman who had her head cut off. The the civil trial don't mean nothing. And everyone should change. everyone should go ask OJ's children what they think. But let's go to the second point. The civil trial was revenge. It means let's nothing. Let's go to That's the second I point because I'm disappointed in you as a black man for making an argument that white supremacists would make. And here's what the argument you're making is. You're babbling, sir. Just go to the point. Go go to your next point because you're just babbling. You're not saying anything. Mm -hmm. Go to 
Here's the point. You're claiming that because a jury acquitted him, that there's legitimacy to that verdict. Am I wrong? I'm claiming that the evidence shown, mm -hmm. the white supremacists that were involved in this case, uh -huh. that proved reasonable doubt, and it proved innocence. Okay. okay. So are you claiming that a court of law heard the case, nine black female jurors, a Latino juror, and two white jurors, so just so we're all clear, it was nine black females out of 12. And yeah, I thought it was eight. Uh-huh, it was nine. Eight. It was nine. But let's keep going. Are you claiming that a jury trial in a, in a court of law, when a verdict is rendered, is automatically legitimate? No, it's not. Okay. I just want to make sure you're not claiming that. It's absolutely not. All because right. Because white supremacists go in court and do things all the time, and you never scrutinize the jury like you're doing the OJ trial. That's not why true. Don't guys, why don't y'all ever scrutinize the Rodney King verdict? You don't I'll scrutinize, scrutinize the Emmett Till jury. You don't you don't scrutinize I'll well, scrutinize the Emmett Till jury. No, you don't because the oh, woman yes, I do. Involved, no, Carolyn oh, Bryant. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Carolyn Bryant that died is an in example her, of a total Carolyn Bryant, sir, Carolyn Bryant died peacefully. She didn't get scrutinized. The woman she who was been put in prison the rest of her life. Shoulda woulda coulda y'all didn't do it. Shoulda woulda coulda y'all didn't do a damn thing. All your energy is on OJ though. All your energy is on OJ. You can talk about uh, one black juror who was talking and being led by this white man, but y'all don't talk about the jurors and all of these other corrupt trials that you let white supremacist race soldiers go through. But, sir, but deep down, let's, let's be real. Do you really think OJ Simpson, listen, for real, you think, and then this is just a logistic thing, that OJ Simpson just woke up one night just for no reason whatsoever and said, hey, I used to whoop my wife's ass two years ago. Now's a good time to kill her. And I got about 25 minutes. You sure. Will you will you give me a chance to respond? I got to hear this. And I'm, the mic yeah. Uh, Tariq, you're talking to a man with 20 years of experience in criminal law and is a civil rights attorney. So the answer to your question is, yes, men often on the spur of the moment and often in domestic violence situations, and often as a result of divorce or leaving the house, they go out and they will sadly commit murder. It happens all the time in divorce situations. You apparently are unfamiliar with the stress that men go through in divorce, the suffering that a ton of men deal with in divorce, the stress that they feel in divorce, so financial and otherwise. So you're saying OJ was stressed because he got divorced? I don't know. He was in a Bronco threatening to kill himself. What do you think? Well, he was sad because oh, somebody okay. who was well, close to him was killed by some Colombians or somebody. So he was sad. Um, well, you suggested that, you know, domestic violence like doesn't happen and divorce doesn't cause people who to said lose their that? mind. You did. I, okay, not don't. You don't, said that two days. You know, oh my God, don't that don't, two don't. Days earlier, Why would he freak out? That. that happens all the time, dude. Are I you never said with that domestic violence. I never, come on now. Dude. You, you don't so, don't do so a let's, right let's let's go to a larger point but, though. Oh no 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 no, you, let's finish, no 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 sure, no no. Ask no. me anything. Let's finish that because sure, that that it. was that was just some you just kind of threw some up against the wall. No, I'm not. It doesn't. It didn't click. That doesn't make any sense. It makes perfect sense. It, you don't divorce somebody and then two years later you want to kill them for no reason, sir. And then you <laughs> get you up nuts? and find a you, are you, Do really? you not know? Why? Why? What was Let the me motive? ask you a question. Do you what have was the any... motive? What was the motive? So men like me who have male friends, we have friends who've been divorced and they've okay, gone through things. God damn you babbling, man. What was OJ's motive? Everyone can understand. Night? Men go through divorce, petitions get filed, motions get filed, adjust my child support, adjust my child visitation. I'm not saying that divorce was the motive. I don't know the motive. The motive can be locked. There was locked no motive because he didn't do it. The motive can be locked inside someone's heart and in their head and no one knows. Okay, a that means of, he didn't do it. Okay, that means No, he a lot of violence is senseless. It's irrational. It's brutal. We don't always know the motive. Right. Okay, that means We he don't didn't. need if motive. You if you can't have a logical reason why this man just decided that night for no reason whatsoever no, to put on a wetsuit and some Bruno Mogli shoes... Mm -hmm. That means that makes no sense whatsoever on the face of it, and a skull cap, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to. Some, I'm, and some gloves think, that didn't fit. 
Are you suggesting that murderers are always rational and never in a fit of rage? But is that yeah, what you're, I mean, is that what you're trying to it, tell But everybody? if you're going to commit a murder, you would at least be practical. Tariq, I'm a 20-year, I told you, prosecutor so of criminal defense civil some, rights. Listen, Most okay, murders. Okay, in your, in your, in your uh -huh. expertise as a lawyer. Correct. When have you seen former lawyer, a, not anymore, a former retired. lawyer? When have you seen a murder suspect get up one night and put on a sweatsuit with some dress shoes, a skull cap, and some gloves that don't fit, and go kill somebody they were in a relationship with two years earlier? Happens all the time. I can literally give you names of people right now that people can Google as they're listening to us and go read about the homicide. Mm. I can give you the name right now, one off the top of my head. That dressed up like that in gloves that didn't fit. And no, not Whitten gloves Jr. that didn't fit. I'm not talking about gloves that didn't fit. And by the way, what do you think about the glove thing? I mean, come on. What, what, what's your theory I about think it? That I like Johnny, to hear white I think that Johnny Co it. I think that Johnny Cochran so outlawed the prosecution that it was a disgrace that the taxpayers have people like Chris Darden and Marsha Clark uh, representing them and protecting the public and the people. I think having people like that as prosecutors literally puts the public in danger. I think Sheck, I think Newfeld, I think Cochran, I think that those three were studs. I think that F. Lee Bailey's cross-examination of Mark Furman, which I have watched personally on YouTube several times, because like I told you, I was a criminal lawyer and Bailey was a beast. And if anyone hasn't seen that cross-examination of Mark Furman, I suggest you watch it because he destroyed him. Yes, but he that's did. Not, but that's not what we're talking about. I'm well, let's let's you, get I'm, back to that glove. But, sure, but, but, I'm asking you to be. A, uh, let me. Let me. But, let me respond. I'm asking you to be a just man and recognize the mother of his children was nearly decapitated. And because I want of her drug use. I'm not saying again motive. I'm saying that he, the jury, his the, the victim's DNA was in the Bronco. He's threatening because to kill Mark him. Let, put it there. Let me just finish the sentence. Short. Sure. All right. You have no evidence of that, but let's um, assume yeah. you're right. Let's assume you're right. Why did they why, take his blood? Why and did the blood? black female juror say we knew Don't he was me. guilty, but we acquitted? Who, sir, you keep, if you think you're going to hang your hat on that black female juror. The people juror, can decide if they think I'm a rational and a fair you man. Because you hang your hat on that, and that's not your smoking uh -huh. gun. The people can decide. Led, she was being led, and she was just kind of. Uh -huh. The people, along hear me, with the, the people, man, the people okay, hear me. Okay, you're, you're talking over me. Family, he keeps, he, because I'm trying to argue the case, he's going to this female juror who 30 years later was doing an interview and she's older and this white reporter is leading her with questions and she's just kind of going along with stuff. So do you think it was revenge? I um, mean, yeah, I guess, I guess you could. You know, she was on that. He was just kind of leading her. So she's just kind of, dismissively saying shit. If that's what you're trying to hang your hat on and you're trying to ignore gloves no, that don't no, fit. No, not at all. Not at all. No, no, I, I, no. Not at all. Listen, I used to tell Dude, jurors all the time. The gloves, I, brother, the gloves listen, were planted. Uh, listen, brother, 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 listen, brother. listen, listen. The, the, the gloves, the gloves were, planted. were planted, sir. You have no... Uh, all right, let's move on wait, to the next on, point. Wait, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, you, let, how do you explain them gloves? I, I want to hear your logic. The, glo the, the gloves were on his hand in front of the jury. They didn't fit. Why didn't those? What do you think fit? this is a? Is, is this a model runway show? Do you think everything has to fit perfectly? That's great. yeah. Dude, if it's your glove, dude, that's, dude, <laughs> that's it's great. Yes, dude, yes. It's if great. If the whole case is your whole thing's gonna slow down. Yeah. If it's if your whole case is hey, you drop your gloves when you kill these people, and the gloves don't fit. That's a problem, sir. Right? You're saying they don't fit. They no 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 logic is saying they don't fit. The world saw they don't fit, sir. What are you saying? The world saw those if gloves. You didn't let fit. me listen. The world is hearing me compliment the past Johnny Cochran in the most. No 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 no. You're, 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 you're filibustering. You're filibustering. No, I'm not. I'm saying he's a great lawyer. He's trying to he's stall. He's a great no, 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 great no, 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 lawyer no, no, no. who used okay. a great line. Does does did his lawyering make the gloves not fit? The gloves did fit. They were on his hand. They, they didn't fit over that man's hand. No, what are you talking Me and you putting on a child's gloves would be gloves that don't fit because we can't get them on our hands. Those were snug gloves. Well, you act they like did. Hand, they, they, they were hanging off his hands. Sir, All his fingers those, were in them. All his fingers were in them. 
they didn't go over that man's hand all the way. They didn't fit, man. <laughs> okay. The black female juror said that he was. Oh, joking. okay, okay. The okay, people can it. watch it. The people okay. can watch it. Okay. But can okay. I ask you a question? No, 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 no. That's it. Because you keep saying the same thing, and now you you're not really coming with logic. All right, we're not doing that. We're not because now you're trying to do on white and I say so, and then you will. The black female juror said, "No, we ain't doing that. That's not going to be something you hang your hat on." All right, so enough of that. Those gloves didn't fit. Those gloves clearly didn't fit because those were not his gloves. The gloves were planted, and y'all know it. You're not going to do on white and I say so. Where the gloves? What does gloves matter? Uh, we're not going to do that. Those gloves didn't fit. They were too small. Well, the black female jury had it, you know. No, no, no. Not doing that. Let's get Dexter in here. Well, Jose, are you ready, brother? Hold on. Let me get Jose. Jose. Hold on. Uh, let's see who's ready. Jose, or Dexter, which one of y'all ready? I'm ready to go. What's up, Dexter? What's up, G? How you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? Pretty good, man. I can't complain. OJ didn't do it, brother, man. Real they, talk. OJ didn't do it. He didn't do it because here's the thing. The guys who, some of the guys who work at the Mezzaluna, like let's, for example, Michael Nick, he's originally from Colorado. Yeah. And investigators digged in his background and they found that he was heavy in the narcotics out there, right? And yeah. the other dude, Brecht, Cantor, mm -hmm. they found him stabbed to death. They found him stabbed to death, and then a Colombian necktie. So yeah. he died in a similar fan, similar fashion, like Ron and um, what's her name, Nicole. Yeah, nobody seemed to be talking about that. And also at the time, right at the time of the murder, um, Denise was in Los Angeles with her mafia boyfriend. He was scheduled to testify. Yeah, and they, and they didn't bring that up. I'm like, yo, y'all not y'all not seeing that these things are related. Yeah, but it, it's just it's just better to blame it's just better to blame black men for it, you know. Yeah, and I see that little cloud Mark Lamont Hill talking. About, I'm like, this nigga make me sick. But all right, <laughs> flex, keep it going, brother. Yeah, thank you so much, bro. All right, Jose, you ready? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? My fault about earlier, brother. I was I was on the phone call when, when it was like. Oh, the there you go. So what's on your mind, Jose? So so I got a question, and then after you respond, if you can't answer it, I want to make a comment because I was I wanted to speak after the gentleman. I think it was was it Big Dave, the the Samoan dude. Okay. Yeah, but what what? Because I haven't been following the trial since he was not guilty. After that, I was just all right. Let's just move on. But did they ever find out or say who it possibly could have been? No, that... they're never going to do that. They're never ever ever. Let's let's be clear. They're never, ever, 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 ever going to say who the real killer was, because if they admit that there is another killer, then they will have to admit that they did, in fact, plant all of that evidence. You understand? Perfect. Perfect. That's, so, they're never, ever, 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 ever going to tell the truth. They have to stick with this whole thing that OJ did it because they've already planted the evidence. They know he didn't do it, um, but they just got to go with it. This is why when you had other witnesses who actually saw people leave that place, they saw there was one woman who saw four men leave Nicole's spot. But the police started to discredit that woman and they started to put bogus charges on her. Why would they do that? Let's put two and two together. Why would they do that? Why would they just start finding things to charge a witness with? Think about that, family. One of the witnesses who actually saw multiple people coming from Nicole's house right during the crime scene, and she said that one was Hispanic and two looked like they were Caucasian, and one of them had on a knit skull cap. She didn't know that they had found a, a skull cap because the trial wasn't popping yet. She didn't know that they found another skull cap there. But they discredited that woman. They started um, um, finding out she had forged a check or something some years before. It's a woman named Marianne Gertrudez. 
and I put a, a thing on her in my Twitter. See, the media never really got into that. They, they always went after or, or interviewed people or spotlighted people who were pro OJ did it. Anybody who could substantiate OJ's innocence, the white media just basically ignored them. You, you see? Um, what's your name? I don't know what your name is. Um, a soldier criminal? Well, I don't know what your name is. Hop on, man. One of them emo looking pages. Us, go ahead. Hey, the funny thing is that other dropper that came up here, they know he had 41 posts and they all on um, what you're talking about right now. Wait, wait, what happened now? He only got 41 posts, but they all on your on your uh space. Who, okay, who's on my space? The other commenter, his name was Joshua Mc, McHim or Menahem, okay. something like that. Yeah. He only got 41 posts uh, on his Twitter page, but they all on his face. Oh, okay. All right. That's interesting. That's an interesting thing. Uh, let's get um, Caleb. Uh, let's get Caleb in here. Caleb. Mr. Caleb. Mr. Caleb, hop on, sir. Expediently. What's up? Hey, man. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So what do you think about the OJ situation? You think OJ is guilty or innocent? Uh, <laughs> these days you just don't know, man. There's just so much nonsense going on out there. Like that, that happened way back when I was younger. So, right. You know, it's, I've seen, a, I've seen a lot of, you know, crazy stuff with, you know, the uh, Twitter files and everything. Nothing surprises me anymore, but I, I really, I, I don't have a opinion one way or the other. Um, so what did you want to talk about then? Oh man, I had a, actually I had I had a question and I completely forgot. I'll be honest, that happens okay. a lot. <laughs> okay, you gotta you gotta lay off the narcotics, man. They're like the narcotics to do that to you. All right, but when you think about your question, Caitlin, you can call back up. All right, I just want to, uh, before I go, uh, I just yeah. want to say hi to Fi here and uh, and today. You know, they, I follow these two; they're pretty cool. Okay, well, shout out to them. All right, thanks for having me up. All right. Okay. Let me see. We've got a lot of folks in here still. And by the way, guys, the new movie, Microphone Check, is going to be in theaters next month. My new documentary film, Microphone Check, is going to be in theaters nationwide. Well, in select cities. Go to microphonecheck.com microphonecheck.com to find the city near you where you can see the film microphone check ladies and gentlemen it's a phenomenal phenomenal film i can't wait for you to see it i might have to do a film about oj talk about his innocence and really go into the details of everything so people won't be out here lying all right but microphonecheck.com that's where you can go let's get um math graham let's get math graham in the building mr math graham in the house <laughs> Mr. Nishi, thank you for taking my call. I just wanted to add another thing. Um, the um, the the souls of the Bruno Mogli uh, were not as uncommon as people were led to believe. That's another thing that uh, people forget about the O.J. Simpson trial. Yeah. And uh, there is also the work of Pat McKenna. And as you've mentioned before, uh, F. Lee Bailey, who, um, unlike John Cochran, kind of distanced himself away from O.J. Simpson after all the hoopla. Uh, and uh, one final point is um, when it was came to the book, uh, OJ, um, OJ's family, uh, it was, I believe Arnell is the one who approved that book deal. And he, OJ would not have wrote it unless he had gotten written approval from all his parents, all, all his kids, excuse me. And that's, okay. that's all I got to say. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I don't know what that means, but okay. All right. Yeah, OJ, you know, they were messing with his money and, you know, they weren't allowing him to, to work. He couldn't get a job back on network television and they were following him around and the Goldmans were trying to find a little money they can get from him. So he would basically, I think he would get Arnell or whoever, his daughter, or get his kids to get the book deal for him 
so they can get the money for him so that the Goldmans couldn't get the money. So I think he was doing that. So he, you know, he, he didn't let the people finesse him. You know, he made sure he wasn't getting finessed. All right, let's get um high uncle. High uncle Mark. And we got over a thousand people in here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We in here very deep. Shout out to all the new people in here. Much respect to you guys for tuning in. What's up, King Cam? My brother, I see you down there. I'm looking down here on the bottom. I see a lot of familiar faces in here. All right. Um, hi, Uncle. Go ahead. Hey, how are you doing tonight, Rashid? Thanks for taking me. Um, I'm good. The, thank you, sir. Uh, the Colombian connection is pretty compelling. I knew people who worked in the restaurant industry back then. All those cats were into drugs and a lot of them got way in over their heads about it. So I just yes. wanted to say that that Colum the Colombian angle is definitely compelling of, of all the theories. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, man, a lot of what the media didn't do back then with the OJ trial, they didn't really go into the mezzaluna and how seedy the connections were. That's where Ron worked and Nicole and those guys would go to the Mezzaluna restaurant all the time. That was their hangout spot. And she would, I think she dated the manager there. So they were all clicked in and that was the dope spot. That was the trap. That's why other waiters from that restaurant, they got tapped at. There was another waiter there named Michael Nigg. Somebody killed him. That was Ron's coworker. There was another waiter there. Somebody blew his car up. The media don't tell you this stuff. You understand? The uh, and, and nobody deserves to get harmed. I'm not saying anybody deserved harm or whatever, but these people were not angels, man. They were around seedy people. There's a reason why in the initial OJ trial, they didn't bring none of Ron and Nicole's friends on. They couldn't put them on the stand. Because damn near all of them were into some kind of criminal activity. They couldn't bring them on the stand. That says a lot. You know? So they were really trying to paint this, this picture of, you know, some real innocent people who, who OJ attacked. They, OJ stole their innocence. Uh, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to tell the truth. OJ didn't kill those people. OJ did not kill those people. He had no motive to kill him. He didn't have the physical wherewithal to kill him. OJ didn't have the skill to kill no damn two people in 25 minutes and not get any bruises on his body. You don't have a, you can't do a professional, a professional hit. That was a hit. That was a professional damn hit. All right. We're not going to let white supremacists lie. Like they did, because I remember, man, in the 90s, we didn't have the Internet. So we had to sit up here and listen to Nancy Grace lie, Tubin lie. We These people got on television and denigrated the jurors, denigrated um, the OJ's family, denigrated black society. A lot of y'all are not old enough to remember. They got on TV and they were using this as a proxy for black folks and they were denigrating the hell out of black society. They were really using this to denigrate us. And we didn't have an apparatus to really respond back. We had to sit up here and take all of that nonsense. We ain't taking it now. We're bringing truth to power now. It's a different day now. Let's get rich in the building. Mr. Rich, hop on, brother. Mr. Rich, Mr. Rich in the building. All right, so while we're waiting on Mr. Rich, let's get Carlotta. Let's get Carlotta in here. I see you down there, Carlotta. Let's get Miss Carlotta in the building. Where you at, Carlotta? Okay, while well, we're waiting on people's phones to get it right. Um, Nuvdo, I can't pronounce your name. Oh, it's Nato. Um, but yeah, um, also on the God. I just wanted to 
come up here and say, for a lot of us brothers that have dealt with the legal system and dealt with courts and all that, we know that for a conviction to be made and for a guilty verdict to be put in place, there has to be a without a reason of a doubt. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so, and like I've dealt with the system. Like I just got out of got out of jail because my white my 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 white roommate lied on me and stuff. But either who, you know, for a lot of us, you know, we know that 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 you know that quote unquote um, without a reason of a doubt has to be put in place. Now there's um you know probable causes within a case that can that can that can have an effect on making you guilty. But still, though. Just because there's a probable cause does not mean that you're that you're guilty. I was arguing with people on Twitter all day about this, about this O.J. Simpson case. You know, they were pulling up, you know, facts about how there was blood on his shoe or blood on his socks or, you know, like like they, they just kept on talking about blood, this blood, that. But that's a probable cause. If I shoot. Well, not if I shoot somebody, but if somebody shoots somebody in front of me. And blood gets on me. Blood gets on my shirt. Yeah, their, their blood is going to get on me, but that does not mean that I did it. Or if right. or, or let if, me let me elaborate on that. Thank you so much, but let me land your plane there about the blood on the socks. See, that's why I want them. I want all of those people to come on in here because when they found blood on OJ socks, they saw that the blood went all the way through the sock, like somebody poured it on there. And they presented that to the juror. And also they showed video of the sock in one position. And then when the police were there, the sock was moved and there was no blood leading up to it. So it clearly looked like somebody got a vial because they had OJ's blood and just poured it on the damn sock. And then all of the blood samples that they got of OJ, it had a chemical in it called EDTA. They don't tell you this stuff. In EDTA, you get that in, in storage vials. When they um, you go to a lab and they they store your blood, they have to put a chemical in it to kind of um, keep it from, uh, I think, from clotting up or something like that. They, they, they have to keep it a certain way. So it's there has a there's a chemical in it called EDTA. And all of this, these blood samples that they found of OJ in his house when they did the investigation after they drew blood from him, the blood samples had EDTA in it. They don't tell you this stuff in the, the white media, which further proves they were planting that stuff. They sat there planting that shit all over the place. And they were, after they took OJ's blood, instead of putting it in a lab, and I talked about this earlier on my YouTube channel, where are my people in the medical field? All my people who work in the medical field, y'all raise your hand if you're in here. I know a lot of you are in the medical field, nursing, um, some some of y'all in the medical field, you you know, when you draw blood, you have to immediately store that in a lab. You get it and you put it in a lab. You store it somewhere immediately. You got to It will get tainted. Blood will get tainted so damn quickly. You have to store it. You have to zip it up, lock it up, seal it up real good and store it immediately. When they got OJ's blood, Furman, the, the, one of the detectives, he was driving around with the vials of his blood in his trunk, then gave it to another cop. He's driving around with it. They ended up taking it out to Simi Valley overnight. They're driving all over L.A. with OJ's damn blood. That's why Johnny Cochran was having a field day on their asses. You don't do that. You know better than to do that. Reasonable damn doubt. And then OJ's blood magically pops up in all of these little meticulous places. They don't tell you all this stuff. Reasonable doubt. Caleb, what's up, man? Hey, I remembered my question. What's up? <laughs> what's it's, on your mind? It, it kind of pertains to some things you've said, but it's more off topic of OJ. Uh, okay, it's a question ahead. I had for you. Okay. Yeah, so I, I was just wondering what your thoughts on, uh, you know, more particularly, and I, a, lot of, a lot of people, you know, we all know, we all know, we understand a, a broad definition, but um, a lot of times there's, uh, you know, 
different ways of looking at uh, the question I'm about to ask you. So I, I was wondering what your thoughts were. Uh, what, what do you define as racism? Racism is systematic white supremacy. Well, that could be systematic within any race. But what I'm asking is more specifically, uh, is it based off of somebody's hate for the someone's ideology, somebody's culture, no. somebody's color, something specific? That's where people get confused. White supremacy and racism. White supremacy and racism are the same thing. Dr. Welsing talks about this. Um, there's no other systematic racism other than white supremacy. If it is, could you please give me an example? Well, see, that's that lies the problem. That's that's what I'm. That's where I'm getting at. I that answers okay. my question, though. Um, right. But yeah, that's that's more enough than I, I right. got to answer. Okay, thank you so much. But yeah, there's only one form of systematic racism, and that's white supremacy. White supremacy and racism, it's the same thing when you talk. That's why they're always trying to project onto us. Um, well, black people are racist, too. There's no such thing as black racism. If black people say something that you don't like. Racism is black people calling you a name. There is no systematic black racism. We don't, we don't have a system in order to practice no damn racism. Racism is white supremacy. And white supremacy is systematic you see it's a system and it's a group sport and it's not about just hatred it's about dominance it's about dominating and it's about mistreating you see we think that you see people confuse racism and hate oh you hate that person you hate them you and i, I said this to the caller earlier there are people in the dominant white society who are white supremacists who will literally have relationships with black people and still be white supremacist. You have a lot of these dudes who are in white supremacist groups like the Proud Boys. That's a white supremacist group. Many of those guys are in relationships with black women. You, you understand what I'm saying? Um, Candace Owens, her husband, many people suspect him of being a white supremacist. He married to Candace Owens. Now she's, she hates black people just as much as he does, allegedly, but you know. Just because a, a suspected white supremacist is laying up with a black person, that doesn't make them any less of a white supremacist. Thomas Jefferson, they call him the father of white supremacy. We know what he was doing with black women. We know all the black kids he got. He put his black kids right there on the plantation. and They get out there and work. Yeah. So racism is not about just name calling and epithets. The more insidious form of racism is very subtle. The, the the insidious form of racism comes with a smile. You see, because that's what we, we really y'all need to get my book, Foundation of Black American Race Baiter. My book is on Amazon, and I actually talk about the OJ case and the I'm white and I say so rule, and I break down racism in that book. Y'all really need to study that book. Foundational Black American Race Bait, or it's on Amazon. You really need to study that. It's real deep. It's a real, real deep book. All right, let me get, um, let me see. Uh, let's get Unka, Unka T. Unka T. And let's raise your hand if you're ready. Let's try that, because sometimes people are sitting around and they're not really ready. Raise your hand if you're ready, guys. If you're ready, let's raise those hands. All right, Uncle, hop on, man. Yeah, I was just in a uh, space. It had your name on it. It was about another chick, but then I went into the space. And the only reason I asked to speak, I was like, well, goddamn, is everybody in the room drunk already? And now I'd be damned if I ain't drunk trying to keep up with these motherfuckers. But so there was another room. room. There's another room with my name in it. Now it was a room that was suggested by your page or whatever. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So then I went to it, and this bunch of white people just in there white explaining. And then oh, I said, yeah. they would never let me up. But then when they finally did, I said, "Look, man, the American system of justice is about justice." The only way you prove somebody guilty is you prove them beyond a reasonable doubt. So ain't now one of y'all can sit up in and say none of the evidence 
that was brought up or refuted, you could say, uh, I don't know. If you could say, I don't know, that means the man not guilty. And right. that's how shit work. It don't work off your feelings and all that other shit. That's just it. And yes, I'll sir. Like but I Thank you so much. I told you, Uncle. Ass up. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was trying to get in there with some of those um, white supremacists who were explaining and talking about, oh, man, that OJ trial has divided us so much. Can't we all just come together? Man, get the hell out of here. Yeah, I'm not going to sit here and use the OJ trial as the great divider because y'all couldn't get you know, your little white supremacist game off like you wanted to. You see, that's another form of white supremacy, that that fake sympathy and that fake empathy. Like, oh, I, we just want to come together, dude. No, no, no. Y'all tried to rig another case, and black folks said, no, you're not going to rig this case. You're not going to rig it. But the black female juror, if I don't give a damn what she says, justice was served. That was a fair case. The OJ trial was very fair. They needed reasonable doubt. They had more than enough reasonable doubt. When you had uh, Mark Furman, the lead detective, who's a bleeding hard white supremacist, planting damn evidence, was more than enough. Uptown style, what's up? What's up, man, Reed? What's up, brother? How are you? I'm cool, man. I'm just calling to find out, did you hear about um, Kai said not? He made some crazy comments calling us uncultured swine, saying all kinds of denigrating remarks about us. What do you think about that, brother? I didn't. I got to hear him. I didn't hear it. So I got to look into it. I got to look into it. I have to check that out and see what he says. All right, let's get um, composed by Morgan. Uh, you know, let me get Wels Welsing first. Let me get Welsing Welsing fan club first, and then I get composed by Morgan. Because Welsing has been up here for a minute. Welsing, what's up, brother? I, I was up here a couple of nights ago. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, hey, how are you? <laughs> how you doing? Just real quickly. You know what? You said something that brought to mind. Do you remember when um, all those police officers and forensic professionals were walking all over the scene of the crime there at the condo, blood all over the place with no booties on. Oh, yeah. Nothing. Oh, yeah. The truck that they had to store um, blood was, remember, it was not refrigerated. It was broken down. Right, right, remember right. Remember that? They contaminated that whole crime scene. Absolutely. And then remember now, the dog. They said that the dog wasn't howling or something like that. And they and then the neighbors said that they 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 um heard the dog barking and they said no the dog wasn't barking and they were trying to suggest that the dog wasn't barking because the dog was familiar with whoever was walking through that door. Bottom line is this Brentwood is a very small neighborhood enclave, highly, highly wealthy enclave. Everybody knows everyone's business around there. She was driving a Ferrari with late on a late for a date as a as a light license plate, she knew what she was doing, driving that car, having her boyfriend drive that car that OJ bought because she knew she knew how to incite, you, you know, an issue with him, you know, violence with him. And if she if he was that dangerous, if he was that dangerous, then why would you live a mile away from him? He was literally they were literally a mile away from each other, mm -hmm. you know. And so at the end of the day, I am not saying what happened to her isn't tragic. It's tragic. But there's no way in the world that I could see O.J. Simpson, who was suffering from a lot of physical issues due to his football. He, you could, he, there were pictures of him when he would try to lift up his kid and he would pause. He couldn't even he couldn't even get up, you know, right, and start, right. there's no way in the world he could manhandle that young man, uh, Ron Goldman, the way he did. So exactly. I, I don't believe it. But thank you so much. I just wanted to remind you about how they just. They just walking around the scene of the crime with no booties on, no nothing, no refrigerated forensic truck, nothing. Right. Yes, ma'am. I remember that. And another thing, too, I don't, OJ, and I don't, OJ wouldn't kill that woman and leave her there so that his kids can wake up and see their mother like that. I don't believe that. Just, just some of the practicalities of it, I don't believe OJ would do that to leave their mother sitting up there laying up like that so the kids can wake up and see that the kids. Remember, the kids would be there by themselves. OJ wasn't that kind of, you're not going to be the kind of father who takes your kids to a recital, but then kill their mama and leave the kids at home by themselves with their mama dead. I don't believe no shit like that. 
I just, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I do not believe it. You're not going to be no doting dad and all that, but you're going to leave your kids at home alone with their mama dead in the front. Don't believe it. Um, M.W. Wolf. Oh, what up, King Flex? Man, it's good to good to be on here finally. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you? Uh, good. I had a question. Um, it's not regarding OJ. It's regarding film, though, if you have a few, few seconds. Um, how would you go about uh, distributing an independent film, and do you have any advice for independent filmmakers? Yeah, man. If you, um, you know, you got things like Amazon, Amazon Prime. That's your best bet because Amazon hits everybody. So, yeah, get out there, hit it on Amazon. Um really get a grassroots thing going on with whatever film you got. It really depends on what your, your film is about. Um, advertise on social media, really utilize social media um, as best as you can. Also, um, one tactic that they're doing with film now, because um, social media can get a lot of stuff out there to different eyes, <clears throat> get people who are influencers involved with the films. That helps a lot. So there's different tactics. Samir, what's up, brother? What's up, Tariq? Um, I, just have a, I just have a simple question for you. So if you don't believe OJ did it, then who do you believe did, uh, committed the crime? I mean, there's a theory out there that it was his eldest son. I think it was a no. detective who went down that path as well. And no. there's some no. evidence of that. But what do you think? No, I don't believe it was a son. I believe that was um, a drug debt murder. I believe it was the drug debt. I believe it was um, some some mob guys, some Colombian guys. They owed some money for some drugs. These women were drug addicts. They were doping it up. They were messing around with somebody's money. They didn't pay them, and they came and made an example out of them. It's that simple, man. That was big in the 90s. I want people to understand that. Back in the 90s, some of y'all are not old enough to remember. In the 90s, man, the dope game was real different. Now, you know, people, drugs are kind of fun and cute. Y'all y'all do mollies and Percocets and y'all play with each other's titties and whatever with the goofy shit y'all do. Back then, people were dealing with crack and coke. And if you were delinquent with somebody's money, crack, coke, especially cocaine, that that's expensive. Cocaine. But here you go. I got, I got to push back. <clears throat> go if ahead. that's the case. Yeah, if that's the case. Why was it such a brutal, it seems like it was a passionate, someone murdered that they knew personally. If it was that, if that was the case, why not just shoot them or why not do it in a way that's not that personal? Usually if, if it's, you know, someone, something that's not personal, it's not going to be a bloody murder like, like the way it was. No, you're not going to shoot nobody in Brentwood. You're going to make the block hot. You quietly kill them with a knife. You get your people, kill them. Do a do your signature move, which was the Colombian necktie. That's the way they killed him. And then they quietly bounced and the killers got away. They did it quietly. But they set a they they made an example out of them. And it, it's not a passionate thing. It's basically their calling card. It's basically, you know, they're sending a message. And other friends of Ron and Nicole were killed in a similar manner. They had another friend called Brent Cantor. They killed him the same way a few months earlier. So, yeah, this was something they, these people were around shady folks. That's just what it was, man. But you see, that story isn't as provocative. Uh, a person in 1994 getting killed over a drug crime, you know, that, you know, that happened every damn day. But O.J. Simpson killing somebody. Oh, now you can really milk that. That's a story. So that's why they had to go with the OJ route and try to frame him and um, plan all that evidence and all of that. So yeah, OJ didn't do it, man. That was that was some that was a professional hit, brother. Yeah, honestly, I don't know if he did or not. I do know, but one thing I mean, you said okay, earlier okay, about let's, let's use common sense. Let's use common sense okay. because the the window they gave OJ Simpson was twenty five minutes because OJ actually had an alibi. They didn't know he had a good alibi, so they had to create the only way they can make it plausible for him to do this was to have a little 25 minute window in order to do this so do you think that oj simpson in 25 minutes drove over there and murdered two people and didn't even know another person was going to be there you think oj killed two people by himself with a knife and didn't get no bruises on his body well, what I look at is because earlier you were talking about motive, 
And I disagree that he didn't have a motive, right? Because okay, hold on, hold on, no, no, no. Yeah. Let's just let's get to the physical aspect of it. Physically carrying this out, You're a forty-seven-year-old ex-football player with arthritis goes over here and kills two people with a knife. And Ron is a young dude who knows martial arts. Ron was whooping on somebody because he has defense wounds on his hands. OJ didn't have a scratch on his. He didn't have no bruises or nothing, man. You think OJ did that and didn't get no bruises on him? It's plausible. Not I think yet. it's plausible. Because I, to me, I look at motive. Who has the motive to do it? If you look at the history of OJ, was he not um, charged? No, he, actually, yeah, he was charged in 1989 for domestic violence. And, uh -huh. and, and Nicole Simpson did call the cops on him multiple times. For, uh -huh. When sorry? they were married. Well, Say yes, it again? That's yes, that's true. When they were married. Yeah, exactly. And then at the time of the murder, if I'm not mistaken, they were separated, right? They were divorced. I think they were okay, divorced. Okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, they, they were divorced at that time. But um, to me, because I look at the murder, and it seems like a murder of passion, like something how, that was... How? How? How is the passion and they've been divorced for a few years? Yeah, but that's not unheard of that someone has that has been divorced uh, for years killing somebody. That's not unprecedented. And then, like I said, if you look at but the murder... But it's not practical in sense that OJ divorced the lady. OJ moved on. She moved on. And in fact, a lot of folks don't know this. Nicole was trying to get back with OJ. She wrote a letter trying to get back with him. OJ didn't want to get back with her. A lot of folks forget that too. And I'm going to post that back up. I posted that years ago. I'm going to post the letter she wrote to OJ. She, would tr she tried to get back with him. It's all of that passion. He just couldn't have her. OJ didn't want her. She, she was fucking OJ's friends. And she, OJ didn't want her. OJ had moved on. OJ had zero motive to kill that woman. Zero. I wouldn't say zero. I don't. I don't think that's, you know, correct. Uh, I'm saying char zero he, characterization. He but but I think it's less likely like, the whole drug thing, right? Because, like I said, the way the murder happened, I don't think that's how, like, someone who's killing someone over some drug but sorry drug deal gone <laughs> wrong or some sort of. And I look at listen. You, yeah. you think what well, you think what you don't what what? No, no. I'm saying. If let's let's go with your theory, you, you were saying is a drug bust gone wrong. I mean, a drug, um, a drug, drug thing gone wrong, right? Drug debt, yeah, drug debt. Okay, so if that was the theory, if that's the case, I don't think they would have killed them in the manner that they did. How you think drug dealers kill people? I mean, not in, not necessarily that way. They don't want to like leave a trail of evidence that could lead back to them. They did. They didn't use no gun. They used a knife and got the hell on and they ain't never been found. So what they didn't leave a trail of evidence towards them. That was a professional hit, man. They knew what they were doing. This is something that they, they were used to doing the way they did it. You think OJ sat up here and who ain't never killed anybody going to do that and not get any bruises or nothing on his body and then be able to hide all that evidence within 25 minutes. Like I said, I don't. Like I said at the beginning, I don't know if he did it or not. But I, but you're saying it's not plausible, right? That's what you, that's your position. I'm it's plausible. I'm saying it ain't even plausible, based on what we know. I'm saying that shit ain't plausible. It's physically impossible. I'm saying you killing two people and one person is fighting back for their life and you ain't got no bruises. That's super nigga talk. That's super nigga shit. I don't believe in super niggas. White supremacists do. White supremacist society has that we are superheroes. We are super nigga. I don't believe it. No, you're not super nigga. I'm sorry. That would make you super nigga. OJ is not super nigga, and neither are any other black people. That was some some. That was a drug debt, man. That makes the most sense. Not that OJ was just chilling one night on his way to the airport. You know, you know, let me go kill my ex real quick for whatever reason and then get rid of all of the evidence and then get to the airport like nothing happened. With no the, last thing, I'll get to the last thing I'll say and, and then I'll go down, but didn't he write a book after, like years after, talking about and, if and, I did do it? And, <laughs> this is how I, how I do it. And, 
this right here shows that you guys don't even believe it because if you're talking about that book where you know it was a fiction book and you know he wrote it to get a bag out of it, you know it wasn't no real confession. Y'all know that. So y'all try to play dumb. This is why I know deep down y'all know OJ didn't kill them people because y'all start playing dumb. Well, didn't he write a book? On I mean, what kind of psychopath does that though? I mean, let's be real. Uh, like what kind no, of psychopath no, no. writes a book about if I did do it, this is how I would have done it. I mean, that's kind of crazy. Why is it crazy? It's, no, no. Why is it crazy? I'll tell you why it's crazy. Because that's the mother of of his children. Right. Imagine being his children, and your 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 father is writing a book about the way he would have killed his ex wife. Well, he. I has mean, that's kind of. Yeah. Go the ahead. Money from that book is don't feed those children. He has to take care of those children, so those kids ain't got no problem with it. Because they I, stopped him, they did everything they could to stop OJ from making money. And in fact, he would have to, those books went through his kids. He would have to get those book deals through his children so that the Goldmans wouldn't take the money. So, so if you were his kids, you would have no problem with with your father writing about that that, that kind I, of storyline? If, if I did what? If you were his kids, right? And your father is writing a storyline about how he would have killed your mother. You would have no problem with that. Um, no, he's a, he pretty much explained to the kids, hey, kids, y'all know good well I didn't kill your mama. And they're messing with daddy's money and I'm trying to pay for your school. So I'm going to write this fiction book to get this bag so I can pay for your school. So they understood what it was. All right, bro. All right. Thank you so All much, right, sir. Take care. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's keep this thing a buck tonight. Yeah, they were messing with OJ's paper. So OJ was like, man, let me, I'm going to finesse a bag out these folks any way I can. You know, they didn't ostracize me. They didn't blacklisted me from everything. So hell, you know, if they want me to write a fiction book, I'll write If they're tacky enough to want to hear a fiction book, I'll take that tacky money. You can't say OJ is tacky. It's tacky for y'all to want to sit up here and read a If I Did It book. So he's capitalizing off of your tackiness. All right, let's get um, Carlotta. You want to get on, sis? Let's get Miss Carlotta in here. Hello, Tari. Can hey, you hear me? Hey, how yes, are you? Yeah, I'm good. I I was just listening. A lot of people sometimes forget that it's, oh, well, like you said, a lot of people are younger, but in the 90s, this was the beginning of court TV. Everything stemmed from that o, I mean, that OJ trial. Right. There's so much money in the guilt of right. OJ Simpson. I mean, CNN, uh, Fox, everybody had a stake in him being guilty. Um, yeah. And also, uh, as far as him, have uh, the, the young man just said just now, it would look like it wasn't a, it was a crime of passion. It actually didn't. Whoever killed her lifted her head and they just slashed her, slashed her throat. It was right. almost decapitated her. Crimes of passion, you come in just stabbing and slashing. Right. <laughs> right. So right. it was very professionally done. I never believed OJ did that. And what was Ron doing? Sitting there looking? I mean, right. so that, it just never made sense. But I think there was so much money, so much money in the guilt. And also the black women being on the jury. Um, the person has to ask themselves, why did they have eight black women on that jury in the 90s? Because that was a time a lot of black women were angry at OJ, angry at black men, dating white women. They right. Thought they thought he was going to, they were going to say. Right. <laughs> right. Great point, sister. That's exactly, that's a great point, sister. Thank you. Yeah. That's another thing. See, they thought they were going to be slick. This sister brought up a good point. And I forgot that was how they were going to try to play it. Marsha Clark and those guys, they didn't want too many black men on there. They knew that black men would, you know, um, um, be more, you know, side eyeing the police. But they thought if they put a bunch of black women on there and show OJ with the white women, that the black women were going to be on some bed winch. Oh, these niggas ain't shit. They thought the sisters was going to be on that. No, the sisters was like, nah, no, he innocent. Yeah, he innocent. He didn't do that. Oh, yeah, they, they thought that was going to go down. They thought they were going to finesse them sisters. Yeah, but no, 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 that didn't work. No, nobody nobody was going to go for that. Nobody was going to throw OJ under the bus because the white media said so and he had the white women and all of that. No, no, no. The sisters looked at the evidence and 
they voted accordingly. They found him innocent. OJ is 100% innocent. And the people in the dominant white society, they know this. They know this. Uh oh, hold on. We got, is this Teddy the Tether? Uh oh. We got Teddy the Tether. We got the, the Tether Bear in here. Hold on. Well, I, now, you already know what his, his mindset is going to be. Teddy the Tether, what's up, man? Yo, this is Teddy Cristiano, man. Put some respect on my name. All right, Teddy the Tether. So what do you think about OJ's innocence? Do you think he's innocent or guilty? Before I get into that, I just want to know why you didn't let me on before when I was trying to get on. When? But they hate. When? I didn't see you. Yeah, I was like waving at you, but you were like, ig you were ig ig ignoring me and stuff. You didn't want to let me on. Over a thousand people in here. I can't see everybody. I just didn't see you, bro. I just didn't see you, my dude. But you're here now. So what's on your mind? Um, I mean, okay. OJ Simpson, right? I mean, it's obvious that he was guilty. Like, he did murder his wife. But, um. It's know, obvious. Why, why did he get proven innocent then? I mean, at that time, he had, like, a lot of money, and he was a part of the Illuminati, and he was a Freemason. So, you know, he was basically... Goodbye, like, nigga. Goodbye, nigga. Okay, let me get some more people on. I'm not... No. Okay. Y'all not going to just talk stupid as hell. I'm not going to even entertain that. All right. All right. I'm not even entertaining that. Um, Net Tech... Hey, oh my gosh, I'm so happy you gave me the opportunity to speak to you. I've been watching your posts. Um, do I think he's guilty or innocent? I don't really think that that is actually what America's looking at. I actually think what they're looking at is like the first reality TV show you could watch, who you can get behind. You know, we all got immersed in it because personally, I think somebody in his family or him did it. And it was obvious. I mean, he abused his wife. He was smirking through the whole trial. You just get this feeling. However, they couldn't prove it. A rich black man got away with murder. And I'll be honest with you, my family was cheering, even though it was kind of, you know, a little bit sadistic. All right, there we go. Was. Okay, okay, I'm back. My app crashed. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Okay, I don't know why it's keep kicking me out of the app. I don't know why it's doing that. Oh, I, I, I'm having the same problem. Oh, wow, that's weird. Oh, it's the Illuminati. It's Beyonce. No, but it is weird because at the same time you said your app cracked and it was like your voice was gone and everybody was gone. And I was like, oh, my God, OJ's innocent. Back from the dead, you know. Yo, if y'all can hear me, can y'all um, give me a thumbs up? For some reason, the app kept crashing. Can you guys hear me? I don't know if y'all can hear me or not. Can y'all give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Okay. All right. Man, um, I just had to get on on my browser. I don't know what happened, man. That's real weird. That's very, very weird. I was, um, yeah, shit. I'm trying to navigate this thing. Hold on. Because now I can't really add people on here now. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see something. Hold on. Okay. All right. Let me approve people this way. Hold on. Hold on. Damn. Okay. There's some janky stuff going on here, guys. I don't know here, but okay. All right, let me see what I can do. Uh, okay. I'm trying to talk to the people. Just something real weird happened, man. My thing just kept crashing over and over again. And... Um, uh, Tariq, I have a live stream, too. It might help you to get a co-host so that you have somebody that's still carrying on the program while you're having te you know difficulties because we get dropped from time to oh, time. Oh, yeah. Okay, let me see. Let me get Nikki, my sister Nikki. Yeah. Okay, let me get Nikki. Now, who am I speaking with, by the way? I'm Elaine Greenwood, and I do content as Super Woke News, and I'm just sitting here at, what is it, about 3 in the morning? 
I got to tell you, I love hearing you say that he's innocent because the hatred, you know, I'm, I'm 70 years old and I remember the trial. I remember our perception of who OJ was. And I, I like to read court documents. So I've read everything filed in both the criminal and the civil case. I don't believe he killed Nicole and, and um, Ron at all. I never right. did. It makes no sense. Why, why did he run to, to, to run into the air conditioner behind his guest house when he knew it would be there, and yet he had no marks on his face? If he had hit that that air conditioner, the thing that that uh, house guest Cato Caitlin or whatever said he heard that felt like an earthquake, he would have his face would have been bloodied. He would have had scars from hitting that that hard. And why would he drop one glove? None of it made wow. sense. None of it. But there was this. It was the beginning of a, this fake media and the enormous profit of access Hollywood and, you know, creatures like Nancy Grace, who they just made so much yes, money on the narrative yes. that this guy killed a, a, a white woman. There was all kinds of evidence. And this is going to be hard to say. And I'm sorry for Ron Goldman's family. But the kid was involved in the distribution of drugs. And there had been another murder, at least one other you know, the Mesa Luna, that restaurant, was a distribution point for yes, drugs. It was. Nicole was into drugs. Um, so Ron was running around that weekend with, he was house-sitting for this woman who was out of the country, and he had her Ferrari or something. But when she got, so they were all, the, the, the keys to that vehicle were at the crime scene. They were covered in blood. She gets them back in a baggie. But the blood on the, the keys hadn't been tested, and the blood on those keys was never introduced as evidence. There was, there was somebody else at the crime scene. They know it because there was DNA found that didn't match OJ or Nicole right. or Ron. Right. And so this narrative, I, I don't, it, it's, it, it just, it, it's, it's wrong. It's wrong when we let media tell us who the bad guy is. Right. But you remember the New York Times cover where they had taken O.J. Simpson and darkened right. him so that he looked more on him? Yes. And then that, that you know, people right now are making a lot out of that Bronco chase. I remember it. I remember watching the NBA game and him cutting away to that. I think what happened is O.J. came back from, where was he, Chicago or whatever, and he's got he's got his manager or somebody who's actually an attorney. First thing he does is he says to law enforcement, of course I'll cooperate with you. No, I don't need... You know, that's just my attorney. He can sit out in the hall. Yeah, I'll talk to you. He he cooperated with law enforcement. I don't think he could conceive at the time that they would accuse him of killing Ron. Right. And and, and, and then I also think that he was getting, you know, doctors like to prescribe lots of medication that have all kinds of side effects. And then when when bad things happen, they scatter like cockroaches and take no responsibility. But I wouldn't be surprised if somebody wasn't at some point giving him antidepressant drugs to calm him after this all started to explode. And he decided to he'd gone to see Nicole's right. grave. And I can't do this. And he gets his friend, what, A.J. Collins or yeah. whatever, to drive him away. I think he was in I think he was driving around, frankly, until um, some antidepressant drugs wore off. And then he said, take me back to Rockingham. But we've looked at that chase. It did seem bizarre. You had to watch and say, why don't they just put down, you know, blow the tires out of the car or put down one of those strips? And why are they allowing this slow speed parade down 405 or whatever? But I don't think that OJ had a plan or a master plan. I don't. I think that media put together that he's doing something weird and this explanation that he's this killer is a narrative that satisfies everyone and we can monetize it. And, you know, here's the thing. The rest of his life, he he didn't go on, you know, that wasn't like the beginning of his crime spree killing other people. Right. He, Like you said, he had no motive to kill her. And I guess we judge him very harshly, and you can't stop people from doing that. But right now, the man has died, and I know everyone says, well, you know, Nicole and Ron died too. If he didn't do it, if you just opened your mind for a second and said he didn't do it, then he actually lived his life with a great deal of dignity on his own terms. Yes, he said, fuck you. You've taken everything from me. I'm going to live my life, what there is of it, and what I have of what I earned over my lifetime on my terms. And if you don't like it, fuck yourself. Yep. Go to hell. Mm -hmm. And I like what you say about the book. Of course he wrote the book because he needed money. And, you know, 
I don't know. I didn't read the book. I don't know that anybody really read right. the book. Didn't they pull it from production? I think they anyway? did, yeah. Yeah, but he got his money from it, okay. so, yeah. Well, I, you know, whatever. And even if you go back to him trying to, you know, getting convicted for trying to take back his own memorabilia, I'm not saying I like what he did, but holy cow, there are people... This is a crime he has to go to jail for. For the, what did they sentence him to? Thirty-three years for right. that. What? What is Joe Biden? What has Hunter Biden got in the way with that? They're not even charged. They actually come out and say Biden is too. Uh, he has too. You know, he has advancing dementia, and is too feeble-minded to be charged. But they have to throw OJ. In. I mean, it just to me, the whole thing is. I know I'm rambling here. In my heart, I don't think he killed his wife and that kid. I'm sorry that they yeah. died. I think it was a drug-related thing. And the man's dead. Give it a rest. You hate his guts? Fine. That's on you, I guess. You but, you know, I think that we have to just say, maybe for those people that are sure that, that he's the killer, you weren't there. I doubt you read any of the case. I don't think it makes sense when you take the time to go through it piece by piece. There's no way he could be the killer and not be, like you said, covered in blood. And, you know, the whole case actually falls apart when you go through it piece by piece. You know, they tore Mezzo Luna down. I mean, the, the restaurant isn't even there. The building isn't even oh, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They got rid of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And there were there were other people that, that were involved in drugs that said, no, this had nothing to do with OJ and that sort of thing. I don't think we know exactly what happened. I don't think he did it. I, I just appreciate, frankly, your voice. And, and, and I actually, the quality of your voice, but but your point of view at three o'clock in the morning to have somebody just say, no, you're wrong, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so thank you for that. That's all I got to say. I didn't mean to No problem. Um, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate Well, thank you. All right. Hopefully this thing, I, I got it back on my app. So hopefully it doesn't crash. How's my sound, guys? Am I sounding weird? Do I still sound good? How am I sounding? All right. How am I sounding, guys? We're in here heavy still. Because earlier I was crashing. And I ain't going to be in here too, too long. You know. But yeah, the, the, the lady just called, made some very good points, man. She made some very, very good points. Um, you know, OJ didn't really have no motive. And just the practicality of carrying that out is it, it just makes no sense, man. And OJ was cooperative with the police. OJ was like, hell, just you know, take my blood, which is unheard of. He's like, yeah, just instead of him saying, hey, man, my, I'm a lawyer up. I plead the fifth or whatever. Well, like, here, take my blood. I ain't got nothing to hide. And then they get his blood and plant the shit all over the place. Yeah, so he didn't expect that. OJ didn't expect that. He he had suffered a tremendous loss. You know, the mother of his kids, they're dead. So his kids, you know, he's sad for his kids. And then they're turning around, looking at him as a suspect. You're like, what the hell? The hell? You see? So, yeah, that got to him. But, um, you know, he, he got proven innocent. And um, the, the media... Tried to flip it. Teddy, Teddy, we're not, we're, I, I don't want to hear your plebiscite babble about no damn Illuminati and uh, stop it. We ain't doing that at all, bro. We're not doing that. Let's get Yappa in here. Let's get Yappa. Yeah, I, I'm not about to hear no Illuminati talk and all that stuff. Um, Yappa, what's up, man? Hey, how you doing, Mr. Tariq? I'm good, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Um, I just wanted to speak on a couple of things. So the app, I, I'm pretty sure everybody knows this app is like very buggy and uh, horribly misconfigured. The the D he could have used the Elon could have used DEI uh, or some shit to uh, to better code this app. So it's full of misconfigurations, and I'll just say be be wary. It it could be um, it could be vulnerabilities. Yeah, uh, on the security side, but then also the the, it's very plausible that the cartel or whoever uh, could have could have um, uh, murdered murdered Nicole um, and Ron. The CJNG or the New Generation Jalisco Cartel, uh, the Sinaloa Cartel, and all these little gangs all throughout South America and Mexico they 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 do beheadings all the time. That that oh, is yeah. very common. Oh um, yeah. So to try to pin that on a 
uh, a retired football player that's ache, achy and breaky, knees are messed up, back is messed up, uh, to say that he that that it was physically possible for him to uh, to to do to do all of that in 25 minutes that that is horrible. That is just it, it it's, it's hilarious. Right, it's it's a ridiculous narrative, man. Like we really, what the hell are you gonna do that for? For real, for real. What, what is he gonna do that? What he gonna do some stupid shit? Now, if, and, and let's look at it from another angle too, man. This is, dude's a millionaire. Black millionaires don't go around killing people, dude. Let's just keep it a buck. That don't happen. You know, you work all your life in order to get your paper up and then do some stupid shit like that for no reason. No, absolutely not. Black millionaires don't go around killing people with no damn knife. You, you know what I'm saying? That just don't happen. Um, AJ, hop on, man. Hop on, AJ. AJ, let's get it popping. <clears throat> Excuse me. You didn't fucking build our country. You didn't build shit. Some of you worked here, yeah, but you didn't build it. You, if that was the case, then you could. Okay. Okay, AJ, we don't do that. We're not playing no recordings, AJ. Now, AJ do you have something to say? I don't know why you're playing a recording, AJ. <clears throat> Let's try it again, AJ. What's on your mind? I don't want to hear no recording. Do you have anything, or did you just want to get off some unfunny trolling? Want to try it again, AJ? Want to try your material out a little bit better? Maybe it can be more intriguing. Our own country. Look at Africa. How great is that built? Okay. All right. He's playing a recording, so I don't know what the recording is, but it's mediocre, unwitty, and unfunny, just like a lot of you suspected white supremacists. I see you over there, Nikki the guy. Y'all need to follow my sister, Nikki. Follow Nikki the guy, by the way, guys. Y'all see Nikki up here. Follow my sister, Nikki. Nikki drops hot fire. Teddy, Teddy Tether. Teddy the Tether, you can put your, your little Dominican hand down and go get you some Goya powder or something. I'm not bringing you on. I don't want to hear about no Illuminati. Don't want to hear it. Um, let me give one more call because I've been on here for a while. I've been on here for a while. Okay, let me get one more good call. Um, let's get, um, let me see. One more good call. Raise your hand if you want to get up. Devon, <clears throat> you're not getting up here. We'll have you on on Musty Mondays. We're not having you on Thursday. And Teddy, we'll have you on Tether Tuesday. We'll get you on. But Devin, we'll, you got to wait till Musty Monday. Musty Monday, I get a lot of y'all Musty Tethers on on Monday. I got to designate days for y'all. So Musty Monday, Devin, then I'll have you on. And the Drilly, you're another Musty one. I'll have you on on Musty Mondays. So that we can just kind of have some decorum and we can flow. All right. All right. And Nathaniel, I have you on Trailer Park Thursdays. Um, it's after midnight now, so it's technically Friday. So I get you on Trailer Park Thursdays. Uh, let's get one more. And some of the Tether women, we'll have you on Dry Weave Wednesdays. We'll, we'll get the Tether women on Dry Weave Wednesday. We'll have y'all call up. The Miss Djiboutis and all of them. We'll drive, weave, Wednesday. Wednesday, we'll have y'all on. I'll, I, I just want one more good call. One more good call. Um, John Mack. Let's get John Mack in the building. John Mack. And by the way, I want to see y'all in D.C. June 15th at the Rally for Reparations. It's going to be popping. John Mack, what's up, brother? Now, John, I didn't pick you out of everybody, and now you ain't turning your microphone on, brother. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry. I do this. I've done this a couple of times. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I remember your voice, John, man. What's going on with you, man? Um, Since you were about to end it, I just wanted to do something off topic. 
Okay, what's that? And I wanted to ask if you were, let's just say you were a genie and you could have, you know, whatever, a couple of wishes. Who would you want to be the next president? Almost like nominee for Democrat, Republican. Who would be your guy? I don't know who. I would rub my magic lamp and... Well, if I had a magic lamp, I would be the president. I would make myself the president. And then I would give all the foundation of black Americans reparations. Um, then I would kind of get the border situation straight. I would do that. Mm -hmm. um, I would create jobs over here so that people can get back to work. Um, I would get the shit together. I would get it together popping. So, yeah, I would make myself the president because I would do the I, right thing. Uh yeah, it was just kind of a throwaway question because I've been listening for a while. But um, yeah, I just thought, you know, I mean, of, of course the government can afford to give reparations. But I just, it was kind of like if you had to like, I don't know, I guess I kind of said what I wanted there to say. Go. But yeah, that's all. Thank you, John Mac. Thank you so much. Yeah. Again, again, next time, call Trailer Park Thursdays. All right, let me get out of here, guys. Hey, man, we got a new movie, Microphone Check, coming out next month. Go to microphonecheck.com, see what city it's playing near you. Where my LA people, all my LA folks, join me this Saturday at the Hidden History Museum. We got a phenomenal comedy show and we got complimentary dinner, complimentary drinks. It's going to be on and popping, ladies and gentlemen. Can't wait to see y'all. Go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com, hiddenhistorymuseum.com and join me, RSVP and join me this Saturday here in L.A. All right, I'm up out of here, man. Puppy Akute, Lola Vuve to the family. Peace. This is the 50th anniversary of hip-hop, and we still have a lot of discrepancies as far as the origins of hip-hop, a lot of claims, who did what, who was the first this, who was the this and that, and such and such. But at the end of the day, we need a definitive story, all right? And that story can only be told by the founders of this culture. Like, everything was being driven and influenced by young, black, American culture, like the slang, the style of dress, the initial uh, music that we chose. Look at uh, all the boroughs, you got, you know, money making Manhattan and money earning Mount Vernon and Crooklyn. The Bronx was the boogie down Bronx. We was partying up there. I am Coke LaRock, the first MC of hip hop. The first cat to pick the mic up. I introduced rapping to the turntable because when I came with it, nobody in the world was doing it. I'm right after Rudy Ray Moore. They want to come in the mix, they want to say, I was, we started. No, no you didn't, no you didn't, no you didn't. What can be known as hip hop was solely an African American creation. What would you get out of some Jamaican toast? What is that? I've never heard of a rapper use a Jamaican toast or a Jamaican flu as a rhyme. I've never heard of it, and I don't know where that myth came from. My name is legendary Kane Trixie from the Bronx, BX, from the West Side. I am the first break dancer. And that narrative that hip hop has had three founding fathers that's been rolling for the last almost 30 years, which isn't true. You don't have just three people who created hip hop. Hip hop was created by a number of different people. I am the grandfather, the godfather of the graffiti culture. I am the first element of hip hop. The roots of hip hop being Jamaican, absolutely false. My name is MC Shah Rock. I am a founding member of the MC slash rap culture. Cassette tapes was the internet of our time. It just traveled around by hand. I know for a fact that the B-Boy stand started from the gods, the five percenters that would be at the jams back in the days who were acting as security. If they get the real truth of how it all was created, then so many lives would not be able to be in existence.